December, September 25th uh, meeting of the select board. Um, we're, we're having some connection problems, the board is. Uh, so it'll, you'll be happy to hear, at least on my, for, from me, uh, it'll be a sh shorter meeting. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to start us off with our um, re liaison reports, starting with Dan, is you ready? Yes, uh, with uh, Andy, I uh, attended the Board of Health special meeting uh, on 9-18 at uh, Parker Middle School. I think there were about 50 residents there uh, who had concerns about the rodent issues. Uh, the issue was aired out fully. A number of options were discussed, uh, which involved sort of a public-private partnership. Uh, one of the things that Bob brought up was the option of uh, po closing Washington Park, which is potentially uh, a habitat home. For, for some of the rodents and uh, treating it over some number of days and then opening it up again. Uh, that's something we have the ability to do without seeking anybody else's permission. So it's one option, uh, habitat, uh, taking away food sources, taking away hiding places was all discussed. And Andy, please feel free to add to that when it's your yeah. turn. Uh, that's my report. Mm -hmm. Gary. Okay, so a couple things. Um, this past Saturday um, with Vanessa, I attended um, the special ceremony at Parker for the Co uh, Korean War veterans. Um, the Korean, uh, the Council General to the U.S. from Korea was there to present medals to 28 uh, surviving and, and also to members of the families of Reading residents who served in Korea during the Korean War. It was a really wonderful, heartfelt service um, from the Korean government. Um, Kevin Bo Miller, who's our veterans agent, did an unbelievable job in getting a hold of the families and bringing this all together. Um, uh, the Korean Nazareth Church was there. They had the, the, the youth <coughs> choir. Um, if anybody gets the Chronicle to see it today, those kids were absolutely beautiful. Um, it was just a, a great event and a heartfelt thanks from the government of Korea to Reading. Oh, there they are. Oh, good. It, it just, I mean, they just, they just lit up the room. Um, and uh, each veteran uh, or his survivor uh, family got a medal from the Korean government thanking them for their service. So that was just a really wonderful, wonderful ceremony. Um, and today, uh, along with Bob and Jean Delios, um, I attended uh, a Mass Municipal Association selectman uh, kind of meeting that dealt with uh, housing and economic <laughs> development. And the featured speaker there was Jay Ash, who has come to Reading a number of times, who's Governor Baker's Secretary of Housing and Economic Development. And he sort of laid out sort of the strategies that a lot of towns are starting, uh, that are using to sort of jumpstart their economy and, 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 and their housing. Um, it was held at the Danvers, um, the Danvers Yacht Club and we were sort of hosted by the Danvers Select Board, um, who did a presentation about all the work that they're doing with their downtown, their economic development. I think what they may have done was sort of taken the Reading Blue, Blue Plan and kind of cut and pasted it because they started to do everything we did in the same order, in terms of studying the, mag, uh, studying the issue, creating housing in the downtown, doing the 40R, um, doing the guidelines, um, and wayfinding, just a lot of things that we did. And, and Jay sort of kind of underscored that and he said that in in this economy suburban towns in Massachusetts they either have to grow or they die uh, and it's simple it's simply a matter of economics and so it kind of was is nice to kind of see the things that we had already been doing now five six seven years now being done by other towns um, because it's really kind of a uh, it, 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 it gives us kind of a um, the, you know, the, the notion that we're sort of doing it in the right way um, and that, you know, and the growth that we're doing in Reading is going to be positive. As part of that, um, this past Monday, CPTC continued um, their discussion on design guidelines within the 40R. Now that we have four projects and sort of one outside the district, it becomes clear that they need to have sort of um, guidelines that sort of dictate sort of how and what kind of things, what kind of best practices they're going to use for designing projects within the 40R. Um, so they spent a lot of time on that. Um, some of the things that they talked about is sort of mitigating the impacts um, on existing neighborhoods and existing um, historical structures, transitioning between um, existing and new projects. When we envisioned this, we didn't think there was going to be five projects going on at the same time, but now that there are. And then um, 
also just kind of ongoing best practices, tweaking the language, going back to create a, a new document. So um, lots of exciting things, and then I'll just finish with one, more, one thing kind of as a segue to this, is that on October 17th, I want to remind the community that we are hosting um, sort of a downtown development forum, uh, I think at the, not this library, the other library, uh, on October 17th. We're going to be dealing a lot with the parking issues and also some of the ways that we can support some of the downtown, um, sort of the downtown commercial um, structure. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're well on our way to a plan that we implement, started to implement five, six, seven years ago, um, and we want the public to kind of come out and kind of take those next steps with us and help plan for some of the parking and other issues. So, that's it. Thank you, Barry. Um, John, you want to take a breath? Yeah, take a breath. <laughs> I'll, I'll go find the right library? Yeah, yeah. possibly. Uh, you're not alone in that one. I went to the wrong library. Okay. Um, so to build on uh, what Barry had said regarding the CPDC, um, they're working closely with the Historical Commission, and there's an emphasis on preserving the historical character of neighborhoods and the impact on abutters. Um, so that's great to see. Uh, in case you're not aware, Burger King has its occupancy permit. Um, the Sunoco site may revise their plans. We're waiting on further information. And there's no up uh, update on the Gould Street demo, so more to follow there. Um, uh, at the Recreation Committee meeting on the 18th, uh, there's been some concerns from residents uh, regarding lights remaining on overnight, so they're looking into automatic timers. Um, there's also been complaints about alcohol use on the premises, so as a reminder, please, there is no alcohol consumption at Perch Meadow. Uh, if you see any, um, please do report it to the police. Uh, the Halloween festivities are underway. The downtown trick or treat will be on Wednesday, October 24th from 4 to 5.30, and that is held rain or shine. And the Halloween parade is at Coolidge on October 28th at 12 p.m. If you plan to be part of the parade, please arrive by 11.45. Um, Joshua Eaton Playground is going to be resurfaced, and there may be an additional structure that they'll be adding that's to be determined based on budgeting. Um, the RMLD uh, commissioner, Meeting on the 20th, uh, we have planned a subcommittee on payment to Reading meeting, which is scheduled for mid-October, and they also plan to present on that subject at the November town meeting. There's uh, continued interest at installing charging stations. RMLD commissioners are interested in partnering with the town uh, to identify places for charging stations. Uh, I suggested that they could work with us, the board, directly, as well as CPDC as they review their 40-R guideline. Uh, they've purchased a lithium battery, uh, which is meant to store energy to help balance the demand during peak times, uh, and that's going to be saving the rate right payers money. They're hosting a smart house tech talk on September 27th, 7 to 8 30 at the library, so you can check out more information there. The interesting part is they had a, a usage report update, and that's that they're continuing to see a 1% decrease of usage across residential, industrial, and municipal usage across all of their town. It's primarily caused by energy efficient appliances and light bulbs. So it's great that people are conserving electricity, but it means RMLD is collecting less in revenue. Uh, unfortunately, the infrastructure used to provide that energy, lines, transformers, equipment, all of that remains the same. So they're actively looking for other sources of usage, uh, which leads back to the charging station discussion. Um, and this could be an area where this board can collaborate with RMLD um, uh, by working with them, it also helps us as ratepayers. So something for this board to consider moving forward. Uh, and as Barry mentioned, I went to the Korean award ceremony. Um, I echo what he says, wonderful event organized by Kevin Bomiller. And I spoke with a woman uh, whose husband was recognized, and she said they had four generations of their family present for that honor. So that was uh, really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Does that leave me? Yeah, you go. Okay, well, yeah. you know, I caught my breath and I'm in the right <laughs> library now, so we, <laughs> I can get started. Um, I do have um, one liaison report and it has to do with public safety. Um, I know that all of us in this room a couple of weeks ago or probably about 10 days ago probably took a deep breath when we got home from work to realize that there were houses blowing up all over the place in neighboring communities. Um, I would suspect that each of you in the room, as well as I know, the, all of us here, um, just 
wanted to figure out what we could do. I think a lot of us felt like, you know, um, thoughts and prayers and, you know, best wishes for many people that many of us knew were living in one of those communities were ever present. But from a practical sense, um, our public safety, um, both the police and fire departments, mobilized if the immediate action and decisive action, actually. Um, on the fire side, our, uh, our chief deployed along with three firefighters. As it turns out, we had two of our paramedic firefighters uh, on duty at uh, Lawrence General Hospital, um, and they immediately mobilized as well. So we kind of had, um, on the fire side, um, a lot going on in a lot of different places. As a matter of fact, um, there's a detailed um, summary that has come from uh, both uh, Chief Burns and uh, Deputy Chief Clark that is gonna talk about, I'm gonna share that with you in a minute, I'm gonna pass it along for everybody to have one and probably should become part of our permanent record if it's not already you know, on the website. Um, on the police side, um, at any given time we had over a, over more than one night, fire I should say, uh, pretty much wrapped up their mutual aid work there uh, the night of. Our police department on the other hand stood ready in a variety of different ways over a period of several days. At any given time we had one to three cruisers there, six to seven officers, a lieutenant, a sergeant, um, two of our officers, uh, who are involved with NEMLAC, the Northeastern Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council, mobilized in their responsibilities there, one to SWAT, one to rapid response. Um, they were busy off and on uh, for about three days. I can say that much as um, we, we were all just hoping the best for our neighbors, our public safety really stepped up in a way that uh, they always do. Um, we've had the benefit of mutual aid when we've had challenges and all of our guys stepped right up and, and really did what we've grown to expect from them. So I wanna thank them and, um, and wish the best to all of those friends and neighbors. Many people still in challenging situations over there for sure and will be for you know weeks and not months to come. So my hat's off to our public safety, and I do have, um, if you just take one of these and send them down, a copy of the actual report. Um, rather than read that to you, I thought we could just make it part of the record and it would be available to you. And that's all I have from a liaison standpoint. So um, my liaison report, uh, first to, to just, um, reinforce what John said. The, read these accounts of what the officers and um, firefighters, police officers and firefighters accomplished when they were up in Lawrence and in Andover. Um, it, it's truly amazing. The, the, these people don't, leave, don't lead normal lives. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing what they do. So uh, I urge you to take a look at, look at that. I know um, the city councilor for Lawrence, whose dis district was hit, um, Mark Laplante, he, he asked me to thank the police and fire for the assistance that they gave to his town and to Andover, um, and they're still, they're still hurting. Um, I went to, brief liaison report, I went to uh, the commissioners of trust funds uh, last week and um, it sounds, doesn't sound very sexy, but in reality, the trust funds give an awful lot of money. They're managed very well by the commissioners <coughs> and um, who care deeply about these trust funds. And they give back a lot to the town in the form of scholarships, um, medical or health aid, uh, giving rides to people, um, they really, I had the, the, the numbers written down, but it's a, it's a fair chunk of change. In, yeah, well, I mean, they give out annually hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so I, I believe, if, if memory serves. 
I too uh, attended the Board of Health uh, meeting the other Tuesday night, last Tuesday night, with, with uh, Dan. I think he covered it well. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of questions, a lot of back and forth. And the most comforting thing to me was that uh, the, the chair of the Board of Health indicated that the likelihood of getting a disease from these rats is, I think he put it, unlikely. <coughs> so, so that doesn't mean we should all go on stand down now. I'm not saying that at all. But um, listen to his words and, and his review of the, of the disease uh, information. And with that, oh, one other comment to, to people who are listening. And I'd like to reach as many people as possible on this. Uh, John discussed with me today uh, a uh, safety issue on the roads. Um, we've gotten some emails about safety issues on the uh, issues on the road, all due to people going too fast uh, on our roads. And I know they're not all Reading residents, but but I just would implore you all to um, th you know be conscious of your speed, and if you're going through a a residential neighborhood. Don't, you know, put the pedal to the metal and to go down a block because there are kids, dogs uh, that could get hurt. And with that, um, I'll go on to the next item, which is the or public comment. Yes, please. Oh, please state your name yes. and where you live. Use the microphone yeah. over here. And use the microphone over here. Yeah. Yeah because they won't hear you on TV otherwise. Uh, thank you. Uh, Gary Phillips, Willow Street. Uh, my wife and I, along with other residents of Willow Street, are here tonight to petition uh, your board uh, to intervene promptly on our behalf. I just want to say, time out. I'm not sure that microphone is on. You got to talk closer. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Speak, speak, speak a little right uh, closer and, and feel free to okay. start over. Uh, several of us residents from Willow Street are here tonight to request your prompt intervention regarding an action by the Trails Committee. Um, we're impacted by their not just proposal, but their plans that are already underway to install a trail, nature trail in our backyard on conservation land uh, that parallels Willow Street mm. on one stretch and then goes from Willow Street back to Hunt Street. Um, this project was undertaken with virtually no input from the abutters or those who were affected by the plan. And because of that, um, we would like that you intervene by either, uh, by both uh, uh, putting a halt on their program, their actions, and go ahead and decide whether or not it would be appropriate to cancel the project altogether. You all should have a copy of the letter uh, that we presented to you, and attached to that is a list of the neighbors that uh, object or have the same concerns that we have. Yeah. So I would ask that uh, to, to open up um, discussion of this issue, that either a member of the board read our letter so that the public at large is aware of what's going on, or uh, that I read it. Sure. Yeah, it's, read it. It, it's in the packet, but, but you, you, you may read it, yes. All right, well, thank you. On August 7, we received a mailed notice from Kim, and help me with the last name here, Schlager. Thank you very much. Okay. A GIS administrator informing us that the construction of a trail would begin in eight days on conservation land close to our backyard property line. We found it disturbing that no opportunity was ever given to abutters to express our concerns regarding a loss of privacy, safety, and security. We are requesting your immediate oversight and intervention in this matter that would delay or terminate this project until sufficient further review and input is provided by all affected parties. We understand the planning of this pro uh, project began as early as last winter, 2017 to 2018, while application for a grant was made in April 2018. 
After a delay in the initial starting date of 8.15, a second letter was re received informing abutters that we were encouraged to present, quote, questions about the upcoming projects, unquote, at the September 12, 2018 conservation meeting. This quote unquote opportunity to present our concerns, objections, and questions proved to be meaningless in light of what was already an approved project. A number of neighbors share common concerns about issues of safety. We have attached here a list of signatures that we got from neighbors on that area, and actually there would have been more. We have reason to believe so, but because of our time constraints, we weren't able to go ahead and speak to all the neighbors. A number of neighbors share common concerns about issues of safety, loss of privacy to abutters, along with the unsuitability of this, pro this property for the project and the lack of parking, which could necessitate use of conservation land to meet that need. As abutters, we have witnessed misuse of this area with activity that included campfires, smoking, drinking, ATV use, and in one case, indecent exposure, as well as trespassing. Years ago, we learned from uh, members of the Johnson Chicken Farm on West Street that the previous owner of this area, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, used it as a dump for rubbish. Sharp glass from bottles and containers, along with metal objects, continued to surface as leaves and <coughs> ground cover decay. We believe the Trails Committee misrepresents this area as, quote, an established path, unquote, when in fact the only proposed, <coughs> when in fact it is only a proposed path, path intended in an area that is often literally underwater. Added to this, we have yet to see evidence of a path ever having existed from Hunt Street to Willow Street, as this area is subject to two, uh, more water and greater flooding. At one point, we had an issue with be beavers in a dam in the same wetland. At the Wednesday, September 12th conservation meeting, we felt the prevailing tone of committee response to our concerns was dismissive, with minimal regard for the concerns of residents and property owners along the three path lines. Time allotted for public input would have been brief were it not for one attendee persisting that she and others had not yet been given a chance to speak. Many of us purchased our homes with the belief and confidence that the conservation land in question would always remain untouched and afford us permanent privacy in our backyards. We feel strongly that the homeowner's need for safety, privacy, and security of those affected by this project should outweigh the alleged quote unquote need for optional recreational activity. Since the proposed start date is scheduled for September 29, 2018, your prompt intervention by delaying or canceling this project is necessary if there is to be any effective relief for the abutters. And again, uh, you should have a, a copy of the signatures of other neighbors who share the same concern. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, we can't take it up now, but we can uh, discuss it during the um, open session for topics not reasonably anticipated uh, 48 hours before we posted. So um, for, for that, so let's move on and we'll revisit it um, after public comment. Any more public comment? Yes. You please. <coughs> So just a reminder, state your name, where you live, and speak into the microphone so that okay. everybody picks it up. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm Elizabeth Gomez. I'm one of the people that wrote that email about one of the emails um, on behalf of the neighbors that I have on Haverhill Street. I have those safety concerns um, for myself um, because I live on Haverhill Street and the traffic is <coughs> high. It's mm -hmm. a very thickly settled area. Yeah. Um, and the people that come off of the highway off the rotary are coming pretty fast. And the speed limit, I think, is a little bit high. So I'd like to propose increased signage, especially for decreasing the speed limit, probably. Um, and hopefully, at least for my driveway, I have a blind driveway. When I come out onto Haverhill Street, it's very difficult. And people are coming very fast. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to propose those two things. Um, my dog actually did die, oh, die sorry. 10 days ago. Yeah, it was really hard. Um, he was just a puppy. Um, he was our world. <laughs> he was everything to us. Um, but he got hit by a truck and was, he died instantly pretty much um, on Haverhill Street, just crossing the street to 
say hello to a friend. Um, and just down the road from Haver from my house on Haverhill Street is the Killam School, so it's yeah. where there's a lot of children walking to school and back home from school and mm -hmm. people crossing the street. And I know my neighbor is really elderly. She lives across the street and I check on her. She lives by herself. So there's a lot of us that are concerned about the increased uh, speeds and the increased in commercial traffic on that street. Um, so I wanted to voice that. I was one of the emails. Um, and I just wanted to see what you had thought for next steps, like what I should do you know, on behalf of my neighbors. I know everyone was really concerned when my dog died, everyone came out. I had like four or five neighbors say the same thing, that they were concerned yeah. about how fast people drive on that street. Yeah. Um, that's why I made the opening comment that I did. Um, the, the, the first step in these, con with these concerns um, is to uh, not to put the police on the spot, but um, I'll, I'll forward your message to um, the act or, or Bob, and then he'll forward it, and it'll get to um, the acting police chief's um, right here. who is right here, and and it'll also go to the sa safety officer. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, and then they have a process for addressing it, and if, if there's something they cannot do, w the board would be happy to work, I think. With and just to clarify, is the speed limit currently 40 miles an hour in that Which area? Part is, yeah. It changes to, f I think, 40 at my house, okay. like where my house is, which is about a, a couple miles down from Camp so Curtis. 40 down to the Rotary? And <laughs> right. It drops right. off to 30 at some point. At 30, and then there's a school zone probably like a mile or two down right. the road. So where you are, it's 40. Where I am, it's, I think, at 40. Yeah, which so means people are probably going about 50 at least. When they're coming off of the highway, yes. <laughs> yeah, coming off of the highway and, and into a rotary and still in highway. <coughs> Speeds, more. right? Yeah, Bob. Um, we're actually meeting tomorrow morning, um, something called PTTF. I, I never remember what it stands for, but it's very good safety. Okay. So police and myself and others will meet tomorrow from the top. Thank you. Um, but one of the things you had asked for about your driveway, we didn't know your address, so if you just let one of the police officers here know your street number, I won't say it in public. Okay. We can't know how to address that otherwise. Sure. Um, the process ultimately <coughs> would come back to the board as road commissioners. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll have a discussion. Because it's not a state road, so we could conceivably set the speed yep. limit on that? You know, it depends. Close to the rotary is a state road, so there's a line in there we can't go, but this definitely paved okay. is, yeah. is doable. Anything you want to add? Just let you know, um, I've gotten a call from Davis as well, and okay. I've asked the patrol lieutenants to step up uh, and get very aggressive with the traffic force in that area, and we're also pulling some data to see what the accident has been, just so we have some information before the meeting. Mm -hmm. So there's something we've got complaints for. Thanks. And one last thing, just so folks know, <coughs> when those speed boards are out there, Thank you. You know, maybe one byproduct of that is people slow down, but its purpose isn't to make them slow down, it's to measure how fast they're going, so it's data flow. Right. So okay. Thank Thanks, Bob. Right. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Marcel Dubois. I live on Willow Street. Uh, I actually thought of two items. Uh, the first one is echoing what uh, Gary and Linda said about the trail. It's funny when they marked <coughs> off the trail. Um, I didn't realize what the what the uh, orange bands were for, but I realized how close it really was to our property line. So. Our yard is fenced in, thankfully, but I can stand at the end of our fenced-in property, at the end of the fence, mm -hmm. and it's not that far from where our property line is. And I'm just afraid someday I'll be out there walking the dog, taking the dog out, and I'll see somebody with a pair of binoculars looking back at me, and I just, it's just very strange to have someone, I didn't realize how close it was to the property mm -hmm. line. So I, I, I urge you, I did sign the letter, I urge you to investigate further because it is, um, it's a little strange the way it was set up. It came sort of surprised us. And if you look at the map, you'll notice the it's sort of a T trail mm -hmm. along Willow. And I, I'm thinking there's still a lot of the trail that could go from that sort of the not the Willow Street end, but the other end. And it's still a pretty nice trail. But where where we are, 
it, it just seems like you could do away with that part of the trail and still have a nice walking in the middle because the conservation covers on both sides. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Second thing is, I just thought of this as we were talking about traffic control. Willow Street also has a problem with speeding. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've ever turned from Lowell onto Willow Street, mm -hmm. it's a very frustrating left turn onto yes. Willow Street. So what happens is, and we've lived there for 19 years, we know what it's like every morning and even in the early evening. It's very frustrating when drivers try to turn onto Willow. So when they do, they're not in a good mood and they accelerate. And our house is only about six or seven houses in. By the time they hit in front of our house, I gotta tell you, I would say 50 miles an hour is not out of the question. Yeah. Oh, they're so, going downhill. Yeah, it, and it's, you know, Willow Street had that problem with the train tracks many years ago, and that yeah. was all fixed, but it's that end of Willow Street where they're, ex and, and you can hear the engines, run. I mean, sometimes I have to turn my head, it's just incredible. Yeah. It's because it's like one or two lights, one or two light cues before you can turn, so by the yeah. time they turn, they've been waiting. So I, I, I don't know if the, if the police can put up a signboard there or, <laughs> quite frankly, you can sit in my driveway and put a gun on them. I'm telling you, you're going to nail. It's incredible how fast they go. A I, radar I, gun. I, street, I, right? You yeah. know, I'll monitor yeah. my, I'll put it on my fence. I mean, it's really annoying. And, and we, you know, we have a dog. Thankfully, we take the dog out. But I, I, I'm afraid of this for the same reason of that woman that it, it would be a, a tragedy if, I just want you to please keep it in mind, and if you can investigate, because I'll tell you, it's, it's a, it's, I don't know why they do it, but my guess is because of that queue at the end of the street, it's really all right. Right. So, right. so that's all I have for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And, and, and Bob will pass the, that concern on to the police. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're here tonight. Andy, I have a, a related question. I, I know yes. we can't venture deeply into this, but the map looks like a town map uh, that's prepared by the town mm -hmm. um, that indicates that the projects that were brought up in public um, comment mm -hmm. are scheduled for 1920 yet I think they're receiving letters indicating that's going to be happening in two weeks so uh, I'm you know I think there's two, yeah, that's, that's two projects. separate two projects. Pieces to it. Yeah. We'll, 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 okay. Let's, we'll go over that in yeah. public comment. No, I know we're going to get back to it. I just want to, yeah. because if time is of the essence, right. we yeah. know we're meeting again next week, too. So, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe we figure out what we're doing there. So. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, any, any Anybody else? Okay, I'd like to move on uh, to... So we'll, let's let's discuss this now, John. Actually, we have you Bob's report. So you, oh, Bob and then. Sorry. <coughs> no. yep. um, um, actually, the first thing I'll discuss is the uh, conservation area issue. So I was on the phone uh, with the town council, and there were two important legal questions to answer. The first one, we have definitive answer um, on November 6, 1996, at a, at a Reading Conservation Commission meeting. We voted 4-0 to establish that trail. So whether it looks like a trail or acts like a trail, it is legally a trail and from 1996. Town Council said that was one important piece of evidence. Um, the other one I do not have definitive word yet. Uh, Town Council is doing some deep research still. And that is exactly how are these parcels held, in what name, and how, what process was used to go there. We have 95% confidence, which is not 100, that they are conservation land. And just to let you know, if they are conservation land held the way we believe, the board has no authority whatsoever over this process right. over conservation. Um, we'll hopefully have that answer tomorrow. If you want to indicate some uh, you know, some preference, if it is town land, that's fine tonight. But my my best guess, and it is a guess because we don't have all the information, is it's going to end up as conservation land, and it's their decision and their decision alone. Right. Right. And you have additional material in your package right. tonight. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, other points. I want to just get this up on the screen. Um, I guess my always answer for the work. This Thursday is uh, our CASA's annual meeting. Um, it's held uh, at Deck of Stairs uh, in the Performing Arts Center. Um, this is the 12th year of what is probably one of the most successful substance abuse coalitions in the state. Um, Sherry is the guest speaker, as you can see, and I just wanted to remind the board and, and call it to the attention of the public, 7 o'clock downstairs in the Performing Arts Center. 
Um, lastly, I, I heard and you know, was brought up already, the Board of Health actually meets tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, I have tonight seen a draft letter that is going to be sent out to about 1,000 households. Um, here's, here's a map if you're interested. Um, it's a relatively short letter, and it'll draw attention to the issue, some of the quick solutions, and then to the website, which is going to be an ongoing repository of additional information. <coughs> um, on the issue specifically, and I don't know, I, I can only say what I've heard and seen, and I've heard very low reports in the last week, which hopefully is a good sign. Yeah. But they could be just going to our health agent directly. She, she um, was out, I couldn't talk to her. Um, as was mentioned, um, I would like the board's permission uh, to close Washington Park. I don't know that we need to, but I do feel like we need to get an expert out there to assess it. And depending on what the expert finds, we may have to close it and treat it. I don't know. Uh, you're the park commissioners. I could do it technically without your permission. I'd rather have it. Um, I don't think that's a big source, <coughs> but we had four um, <coughs> residents, immediate abutters, um, cite that as a possibility. They saw rats running from the park. Um, they mentioned how folks walk their dogs and don't pick up after them. Since it's our land, I think we have some responsibility to just at least investigate the situation. <coughs> And then, depending on what the experts want, yeah. take action. Uh, Bob, I just wanted to make a comment about the dog waste. Um, the chair um, last Tuesday night did back off and, and say that there's really not any evidence for rats being drawn to. Um, he, he looked into the scientific literature, and there's no real strong evidence that uh, suggests that rats are, are are attracted to dog waste. And when you we think about it, it makes sense because there's not much food content uh, for rats in dog waste unless it, the dog's been at a bird feeder, which we've all seen. Uh, so, but yeah, I, uh, how does the board feel about... Um, and just to throw a last piece of information, working with Jenna, uh -huh. um, there are no scheduled recreation uses that cannot be accommodated in another country no. for the rest of the fall, actually. Yeah. How long a closure do you anticipate? It depends what he finds. It could be a day. It could be longer. So, so this is to investigate treat. and, so just and to treat? Just to investigate it. Um, Would you treat right after that? I don't that? think we'll investigate by Tuesday, so I won't yeah. be able to get back to you that fast. Um, I would say if he finds something, we should treat it right away, so I'd ask you for both. Again, we can close that park for the foreseeable future without impacting programs on the park. Obviously, it impacts the informal use by neighbors. Mm -hmm. Do we have an idea from the inspector how long um, the investigation portion will last? I actually, residents have reached out to me with concern about the fact that there aren't, a, there isn't a lot of green space in that part of town, and so closing that for any length of time could negative, negatively affect neighbors. I don't, I'm not an expert. I would have to guess that the investigation would take a very short amount of time, one or two days. Yeah. Maybe they do something the first day, they have to then do some test and they come back, but I can't imagine it's more than that. Treatment's a different issue, I don't know. Bob, if um, uh, you are going to, we are going to investigate it, and again, um, you know, what I've heard is that there, you know, there's some, there might be a house or two that rings the park that could be the source that maybe the rats just ran across the field. Um, you know, I don't like the idea of closing parks unnecessarily. Obviously, this is the one thing we can do because it's our land, so it makes sense to look at it. Um, but I would, I would hope that if, you know, investigation, if it is going to be closed, that there's some type of broad-scale notification goes out to oh, folks, yeah. whether it's not just the butters, maybe we use the town's uh, reverse 911 and let folks know, <coughs> give them an idea about, you know, what's being done and when they can expect to be able to enjoy the park again, yeah. as opposed to just coming down there and just say, oh, now it's closed. Um, yeah, it, it would, if it's going to be closed for more than a day or two, we'd have to do that. There's playgrounds also there, so yeah. we'd be obliged to let the neighborhood know. Okay. And uh, if I wasn't clear, uh, tomorrow's Board of Health meeting is going to vote on a final letter. It's being mailed out, good old U.S. mail, 1,000 uh, uh, letters. Yes. Um, Go ahead, Vanessa. Oh, one more, sorry. Um, I, I mentioned in an email, um, our legislators are coming next week, mm -hmm. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions, areas of concern, topics to discuss, I really do need to know that by tomorrow at noon. I promise them something in the afternoon. Okay. So thank you. 
What's your comment? Did on you have Washington a, a question on the park? Uh, Washington Park. Yeah. And then, you know, on to the other comment. But yes. I was going to say, if you have Washington Park, why don't you go ahead? I have a um, trail question. Okay. So the Washington Park question. I mean, a couple of things come to my mind. <coughs> One of them is, I thought you know a very apt comment um, from you know it, during the public comment period in our last meeting was um, a woman said to us let's not look at what we can what we can't do let's look at what we can do mm -hmm. you know I mean we can't go on private property around this problem right and and actually act in an official way this is public <coughs> property and we can um, so I think that it's certainly worth vetting this and finding out what's going on I'm the last guy that wants to ever close a park and yeah. I think you all know that um, but what I would suggest, uh, Bob, I suggest this to you, is that I would be in favor of um, approving this, but you managing that process in a way that says, okay, we're going to close this for two days while testing goes on, okay? They're going to be able to tell you at the end of that day, probably, what their findings are, and then we can react quickly. So in other words, the idea of you know, we put a sign out there and we put it on the website and we close it for two weeks while it's pending, I don't think is a good idea. Okay. If if the, the company you're going to hire doesn't get there till next Wednesday, right. then that's when you close the park. And if it's oh, yeah. for two days, you close it for two days. <coughs> and if the findings are negative, we get it back open. And um, people use the green space in this town. There's no question about that. But at the same time, I think this is an opportunity to maybe uh, take a positive step forward. So I would be in favor of actually just empowering you with our permission. I know you don't officially need it, but um, I think you can just manage that process so that it's as less in the way of everybody's use as possible. Uh, Bob, I, I agree with what the board said. Um, thank you for asking us. Um, and I, I think the only other question I would have is if they, if they do find evidence of, of uh, rats taking up residence in the park, um, that we put, and the Board of Health puts thought into how they would uh, mitigate that. Because I'm, I'm sure, you know, if, if you go the po poison route, um, some residents are, are going to be concerned. So uh, I don't have an easy answer for that, though. So w is this the trails? Sure. Uh, no, this is still Washington Park. Oh, yes. Uh, so, John, I, I agree to empower um, Bob to handle it as he sees fit. Um, the only thing I would emphasize is even closing the park for a day or two, especially given the limited green space in that area, a bit of communication go out, um, not only to abutters, but widening that circle a little bit, because anyone who's in that within probably a half mile area of that park, I'm assuming walks their dog there. Um, so, okay. thank, you. thank you. Thanks, Bob. Anything else? Nothing, thank you. Um, I had some emails to highlight from, uh, to the board from residents, but I, I can't access my notes, so uh, I apologize. But we do read your emails. Um, and um, we address them in, in some form. <coughs> yes. So who is uh, of our board the liaison to? I am. Conservation and Trails? Not conservation. I'm conservation. Andy and John are and conservation yeah. and trails. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, I also heard from residents regarding their concern about these trails um, and how they're going to affect them. Mm -hmm. So even if, as Bob stated, we may not have any standing to stop or, or otherwise um, affect this decision, this project, mm -hmm. this might be a good opportunity for us to work with Trails and Conservation um, as the two, the three of you as liaisons to say, we're, we're hearing from residents about this. Is there something we can do to work with the neighbors to address right. some of their concerns? Um, I've heard concerns about not just the ones listed here tonight, but also um, about parking in those areas for the neighbors that are going to be expected, especially on those that are on um, uh, cult sex. So something to consider for those who are the liaisons to that board. Yeah, I, I, my 
What struck me the most about this is what Bob said. This, this may not be our call. Um, so I, I, I propose, if it's okay with the board, to have Bob, you were gonna f firm up some of those. As soon as Ray lets me know. Yeah. Let you know who, who, if it's conservation land or town land. Um, but if it seems that's the way it's leaning. There's one document that we should have, and just so you know, this goes back to 1909. Yeah. It's a document we should have that shows town meeting voting land to conservation mm -hmm. if, if it arrived there the way we think. Um, if, if you own land, you can give it to conservation with no action at town meeting, but we think this came there another way. Uh -huh. one document missing. They're going into Cambridge tomorrow to find it. Okay, all right. <coughs> 1909. <laughs> well, he's got it in his house. Yeah. Um, so to clarify, for these neighbors, because it does sound like there's two groups that are organizing, not just the ones present here tonight, but the ones that I had spoken to, um, do, they have it, do they have any recourse for the proposals as they stand now? Um, as, as I understand it, some of the work is scheduled to start this Saturday, and there is, I'm sure, no trails meeting or conservation meeting between then and now. So for that, no, they wouldn't, other than they can once again appeal to those committees. Um, they can certainly ask for agenda time at a future meeting to discuss the longer-term project and the larger project. And again, pending what I may learn. Andy, it's not without precedent that um, when committees need to interact sometimes mm -hmm. with the board. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we've organized a chair, vice chair, you know, informal discussion, and that, you know, that has precedent. And I think it's, I, I think if, you know, if you and Barry could, you know, somehow find time to meet with the chair and the vice chair just to kind of better understand, you know, Bob will have a better yep. handle, you know, hopefully by tomorrow or so about the real standing of who's in charge of that particular project and property. Um, but I think to Vanessa's point, sometimes a conversation, you know, yeah. uh, you know, an informal, you know, but organized conversation between the chair and the vice chairs um, often bears fruit and, you know, kind of gets to a better end. So I'd offer that, I'd suggest <laughs> that as a, as a possibility. Yeah. Mr. Chair, yeah. as, I, as I read it, um, it looks like the Mallet Street or the Mallet section of yeah, it um, yeah. is already an existing trail, which means that there's already an existing permit, so there's no, there's, not, there's nothing really um, that's needed to do. However, next year when the Hunt Street section um, gets vetted, that is not an existing trail, and I think that leaves a whole lot of opportunity for the, uh, for the Trails Committee, the Conservation Committee, you know, anyone else to sort of sort of vet that project, have a, uh, more of a, a public um, comment. But I, you know, listen, I'm I, sometimes just sitting down with coffee with chair to vice chair, you know, at least we understand some things. So I'm happy to do that, um, you know, working with the other groups. Dan. Yeah, uh, Bob, maybe you know the answer. Uh, is it conventional for the Trails Committee to do this kind of improvement with no hearing for the neighbors, the abutters? Um, if it was a new trail, it's required if it's yeah. on conservation land. So for the second leg, it does the Hunt Street thing, that's required yeah, public that's, outreach. We understand that. Part. Um, I'm for talking this about this one. There was no required public outreach, but they did it. They they did it in the form of uh, notification and agenda items. But there was no hearing at a trails committee meeting. I don't know. It was Kim in the room. I don't know if there was a formal hearing, but there was definitely two meetings where there was discussion. Okay. And, there. and there was a delay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Thank you for your detailed report, by the way. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, there was no hearing on the trail that would go from Lowell Street to Willow Street because uh, we applied to the Conservation Commission as an existing trail. Uh, there's a standing townwide trail permit, which lays out very clearly the criteria, what hoops you have to go to basically through con with conservation, depending on what type of work is, is um, being proposed. So if we want to go, or a, an abutter 
uh, volunteer uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, if they want to clear a trail, an existing trail, take out a tree out that's fallen down, um, that's permitted with no notification of the Conservation Commission. If you go, and, then, and then there's a series of steps. It's, if it's an existing trail, but a new um, structure, and that's the case here, where there's a boardwalk proposed, yeah. then uh, the Trails Committee can go before the Conservation <coughs> Commission and ask to have the permit, ha have the project approved under that standing permit. Um, and that townwide permit has worked really well for um, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts too, because it lays out very clearly what the steps are depending on how serious, the pro how big a project it is. We have a history in Reading uh, where boards and committees sometimes go over and above the legal requirements and do have public hearings. Uh, I'm a little disappointed given the interest level of the neighbors that no consideration was given to this. So typically what the uh, Trails Committee has done, um, uh, once they have permission to build, to work on an existing trail, is to let a butters know, to send a, a courtesy letter to a butters, um, let them know maybe 10 days, two weeks ahead, in this case it was about two and a half weeks ahead, hey, we're gonna be in your backyard, this is what we're doing, here's who to contact, here's a map. Um, and that's always sufficed before. I'm trying to remember, I think once we had an abutter on Kylie Drive that had a question about their property line, just wanted to make sure we weren't on their property line. Um, otherwise, it's conservation land, uh, there are existing trails. Um, it's in both the Conservation Commission's uh, mandate, if you will, and the Trails Committee's mandate to maintain and improve trails uh, through conservation land. We learned, we listened to the, to the abutters, um, the traffic issues on Hunt Street, as, as Bob said, that'll come up at a public hearing, um, but that was good to hear. And the, the Trails Committee responded that when we do a project there, maybe we can have people park up on Vine Street or something. Um, otherwise, the people on Willow Street have had two notices so far and an invitation to come to a Conservation Commission meeting. I think you're right. I think in the future, when we have that many abutters, we could be more proactive and let them know when we're going before the Conservation Commission in the first place. It simply has never been an issue before. Um, could you describe, we, we read some emails in our, that are in our packet from you and others in, in, in Town Hall. Could you describe, there has already been a delay um, for this project. Could you just briefly describe that Right, so Mrs. Phillips um, called me and emailed me, um, I think it was August 8th, um, after she received the first of the abutter courtesy letters, um, which was sent on July 24th. Uh, and that was announcing trail work to be done on August 11th. So she called me in early August. We had a good conversation. Uh, she followed up with an email, and I followed up with an email, email back to her saying I would look into her main concern at that point, which I, what I understood was, whether her property actually extended into what we are calling the Millette Conservation Area. <coughs> I did some research, uh, engineering did some research, I talked with Matt Cronellis, I got back to with her, her within a couple of days and we said we'd postpone the project so that she could provide some documentation about her property line and so that we could too. So we, pro we postponed a decision for a month and then when that month was up, it gave her a chance to, on uh, both sides, a chance to research property lines and then we set the trail date again. Um, so in early September, we set a date, a work date for uh, this Saturday, the 29th. Yes. <laughs> Linda, Linda Phillips, Willow Street. <coughs> I know more about this project than I care to know, to be honest. I've done a title search on the land, no charge to the town. Um, the town took it over in um, 1974, I believe it was, because of non-payment of taxes. And uh, for $200, the town bought the land. Um, the process is very concerning because we care a lot about process and notifying neighbors. And for example, my neighbor a couple of houses away just wants to replace a worn deck. And I got a notice the other day 30 days, there's a hearing that I can complain or express my concerns about it. Yet the town owns land that a subcommittee of the town, conservation and trails, who does, does trails report to conservation? No, or are no, they a no. separate? No, separate. 
So who did they report to? To the Board of Selectmen. That's why we forwarded our concerns to you. <clears throat> because the comments made at the, there was no hearing, we had a letter. The letter was dated the 24th, but we didn't receive it till after, over a week later on the 7th, and I called her the next day. And it informed us that work was going to be done within a week on the land behind us, which was concerning. And I have an old property map of my property, which actually was a former owner of that land that describes that and says exactly what I just said. So I was concerned how that happened. So I did go to the registry, spent a lot of time, but that, wa that land is wetlands. And when we purchased our property, we were told we would have privacy, and that was the main selling point. And all of our neighbors who wrote, which there's 10 names, but they stand for 10 households, so there's mm -hmm. more than one person in each household, had the same reason, the impetus to buy a property that bordered conservation land, a wetland, so no one would build. So then we got the map uh, with the area, which, which I left in your places tonight. Mm -hmm. There yeah, is we, no we existing trail. I want that to be clear because conservation keeps saying that. There is no existing trail. There is a little area, if you look at the map, there is a little area off of Willow Street near the railroad track. There's 15 or 20 feet access. That is a tarred path. And I have marked on your paper a little orange uh, <coughs> mark that shows that that tarred path ends there. The reason that tarred path ends is because it's wet yeah. all over there. And as you can see, they're going right through wetlands, right over to Lowell Street to make a path. Now that already is con area that's open to the public. Our concern is by actually constructing a path makes it more accessible for people who don't have business there for a nature walk, but we've had bonfires, we've had serious issues yeah. with, especially because we're located <coughs> to a school. Linda, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask you to wrap it up because uh, so it's not we, an have all, we have all your information. It's not I've an existing path. Yeah. So to me, that doesn't give them a blanket of 25 years ago. We've been there 22 years. No one's ever cleared a path. No one's ever done anything to the area. And there's animals down there. I don't know if anyone's checked if there's anything. There's duck nests. There's shrews. There's, um, we have actual uh, turtles who have laid eggs right in our mm -hmm. backyard. So it's a nature area that we all love and appreciate, and we don't want it to be abused in a way that is gonna be detrimental to our safety and security of property. So I don't see how a 20-something year old decision made before some of us were there is like an okay for them to go do a trail whenever they wanna do it. Okay. We'd like to leave it natural as it is. Thank you, Linda. Andy, if I may. Yeah. Given the public interest in this particular one, and, and Linda and Gary, thank you for the map, this is very helpful. Um, the trail that's set to start this weekend is the one that abuts Willow Street. Um, sure. Kim, since we have you here, is it possible to, since it's already been delayed, to delay this for another week uh, until Trails or Conservation can perhaps meet with the liaisons here? to see if we could find some way to address the neighbor concerns. I understand that technically on paper, this is an existing trail, um, but if it's been overgrown for the better part of a decade, um, it certainly doesn't feel like a trail for those that are going to be affected by this. Um, so is that a possibility? Sorry to put you on the spot, by the way. I'd like to speak with Bob tomorrow about it, and perhaps with Matt Cronellis. I'd like to find out what town council has to say. It takes a lot to launch a project. Mm -hmm. It yeah. takes finding the volunteers. It takes <coughs> cutting the, sta the stock. And in this case, we have DPW lined up to carry the materials to the site um, yeah. so that the volunteers don't have to carry it too far. Um, uh, we could I postpone it. Mm. Yeah, we could. But yeah, I. I I'd like to weigh in here and, and say a couple of things about this. I hear the residents' concerns, um, but we appoint the Trails Committee to do a job, and we appoint the 
Conservation Commission to do their job, and they're supposed to, uh, you know, pursue their mission. And, and I'm I'm reluctant to have a chair-to-chair -chair meeting that's off the record, and nobody knows what we've talked about, um, and and try to reverse a 4-0 decision by the Conservation Commission. Um, they know about the residents' concerns, um, and they, they decided in a, in a vote 4-0 to continue with the project. So I, I would be a little uncomfortable in, in um, at least as chair and liaison to try to, to have the appearance of um, overly influencing, I'm not an expert in conservation or trails. Um, just a minute, just a minute, I'm sorry. Um, so that's, that's sort of where I stand, stand on this. I also hope, and I'll, I'll just say this quickly, there are already, as you say, people going back there, lighting bonfires. If you have a trail there, I know that's a bird sanctuary. And so um, hopefully by having a trail that, that people y use to go bird watching, for example, or have a walk in nature, um, people lighting bonfires and uh, drinking and acting up back there uh, hopefully will be mitigated somewhat. Barry. And just, I mean, from what it sounds like, um, the Conservation Commission has the authority to do what they did. It seems like the only outstanding piece of information is whether or not that particular land in question was titled properly. And that seems like it could be determined, you know, determined quickly. Um, you know, again, I, I hesitate. I mean, let's, let's face it, this board's been accused of stepping on other boards' toes before. And I don't want to do that again um, if, it's do if everything was done if it was done properly. The trails, the trails Committee has a mission. It's basically to improve and for the enjoyment of the town um, those, um, those areas which it, under, you know, which, would, which it oversees. So I think if we can quickly determine whether or not that legal piece is done, um, th there is not a whole lot I think we can do. However, when it comes time to the point where we're doing the Hunt Street piece, that's not an existing trail, that certainly has the um, opportunity for um, more public comment right. and input. So right. that's that's my thinking on it. May right. I point so out I that I at, at the... I'm I, sorry? Um, if I could make just another point. At the Conservation Commission uh, meeting at September, on September 12th, when the abutters were invited to, join, to uh, participate, mm -hmm. um, people spoke out for the trail as well. Uh, and we've got had two abutters who have asked to volunteer on the trail too. Um, since this wasn't a posted agenda item, you're not hearing from those people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, oh, um, right now. Uh, so, so, uh, j just a second, Linda. I, I, I've given everyone a long time to talk about this work. work. Yes, Linda. I've heard that. We've, we, we've heard that. Folks, 
five minutes has been requested. What are we going to do when we get back? So, so uh, and we'll discuss what we do when we get back because yeah. we're running behind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a quick bathroom break. Um, the next agenda item may be long. So is we got a long one for town closing the warrant. Right. Well, that's right. We'll do that quickly. And so uh, athletics. I'm going to run fast.
people are here for the stakeholders meeting, um, but we have a couple things that need to come before that that are very important. We will get through this as quickly as possible and then get into the stakeholders meeting. So I, I have, you know, unexpected delay. Um, so, Bob, uh, closing the warrant for November town meeting. Yes, thank you. Uh, couldn't it be a, s a simpler town meeting? Um, yeah. 10 articles. Um, you had seen a preview of 12, and I had mentioned a possible 13. Mm -hmm. uh, the last three fell off. Um, th <coughs> the first three articles are prescribed by the charter. Um, several are financial housekeeping ones. Um, one is permission to um, borrow from the MWRA, and the last one is the only slightly interesting one. And that's the uh, Wakefield Reading tax title land that you've already voted on going to town meeting. So I'd ask you to move to approve this uh, warrant as presented with 10 articles. Before we do that, uh, Bob, yes. uh, can you give us an idea of how many reports are going to be presented and which ones? Um, I'm not sure if the moderator wants to give a 375th. Um, yeah. The bylaw committee will give an update on the gender neutral bylaw progress. Right. RMLD and the schools will give an annual report. Um, the Permanent Building Committee wants to give an update, and that's the only ones I know of for sure. Should the uh, payments to the Town of Reading Certainly, report? Uh, it depends if Colleen wants to include that in her report or, or, okay. or it gets stuck in next. Because they're meeting uh, in the beginning of October. Whatever they want of October. Yeah, whatever they'd yeah. like to do is fine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, move that the board close the warrant for November town meeting consisting of the 10 articles as presented to take place on November 15th, 2018 at Reading Memorial High School. Second. Discussion on the matter. All in favor? Five. Five. <coughs> oh. Okay. Friends of Reading High School baseball batting cage at Morton. Seats or just one? Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ray Blanchard. I'm the president of the Friends of Reading High School Baseball, <coughs> and I want to thank you for uh, enabling us to come for, before you tonight uh, about our proposal to make a donation to the town of Reading. Uh, let's give me a little background of the Friends of Reading High School Baseball. We're an organization, a nonprofit organization, developed to raise funds to support the high school baseball programs. Uh, we've been in existence since 2014. We can consist of a community, uh, community volunteers, alumni, and parents. Our annual donations uh, currently support the hiring of assistant coaches, uh, conducting team events like Senior Day and the end of the year banquet. This proposal represents our first capital improvement as an organization back to the town of Reading. Our proposal here tonight is to donate a hitting turtle to the town of Reading. Uh, just a little back note, we've already met with the uh, Recreation Committee, we've met with the Department of Public Works, uh, we've met with everybody uh, that we thought needed to be brought into this uh, discussion uh, to make sure that it was a seamless uh, transaction. Uh, so what we're proposing tonight is to uh, donate a hitting turtle, which you can see in the in the cage in the picture there, uh, which is a, a safety tool and also a training tool, uh, and it's relative to helps to train hitters more safely. It enables foul ball, it, it eliminates foul balls into the wetlands. It helps keeps bystanders safe, and it allows coaches to have a closer proximity to hitters for instructional purposes. So for anybody that doesn't know, this particular cage goes around home plate at the baseball field. And what it does is it stops any foul balls or balls from going anywhere but onto the playing field, okay? Uh, some of the speci specifications are, as you can <coughs> see on the, on the graphic there, um, it's 20 feet deep, 13.5 feet wide, and five feet high when it's collapsed. Uh, this is a collapsible unit. So it does not have to be, uh, as you can see in the bottom picture there, at its uh, elevated state at all times. It collapses down to approximately five feet uh, when it's not being used. A uh, couple of different ideas about this particular unit is uh, obviously the safety reasons. And as I mentioned earlier, it keeps all balls that are hit addressed out to the actual field of play. No foul balls behind home plate or uh, towards the stand area or anywhere around the actual location. 
Uh, another tool of this particular unit is uh, for instruction. Uh, I have here today with me tonight uh, Coach uh, Dave Blanchard, the uh, Reading High School varsity coach. And uh, this, our organization uh, runs as a private nonprofit organization, but David is used as a liaison to our group. And every year when we talk about budgets, David presents a budget to us and gives us his idea of what he needs. And as we've stated earlier, we've been hiring coaches, uh, we provide uh, senior day, and we provide our banquet at the end of the year. Uh, this year, we as an organization decided that we've had some good years of fundraising and we're doing, we're doing well as an organization. We we're able to provide David with the needs that he has as a program. So this year we decided we wanted to make a capital improvement back to the town. And through David's suggestions, the hitting turtle is what we came up with, okay? Just to give you a little background on how we got to where we are today. Um, so from the standpoint of Coach Blanchard, uh, from an instructional standpoint, this will enable the coach to be within six feet of the batters while they're actually taking batting practice, giving him better visibility to see what may need to be addressed from a hitter's perspective, okay? Uh, as far as mobility of the unit, uh, as you can see again, uh, from a collapsed state, there's a, uh, an actual wheel in the back of the unit. As you can see the gentleman in the picture there, what he does is he pulls down that lever, which activates the wheels that go down, and then it easily can be moved by one person, okay? The structure itself is built of aluminum, uh, so it's very light and it's uh, easy to move around. Uh, the storage of the batting turtle, as I mentioned, it collapses down to five feet. Uh, so it, can't, it, it, it comes down to not become a safety hazard for kids climbing on or anything like that because it's, it's relatively short and low to the ground. Uh, through the conversations with DPW and the rec department, uh, we found a location at uh, Morton Mescarelli Field where it can be stored so it'll be out of the way of grass cutting and that type of activity so it's not a hidden to anybody, okay? Um, the other thing we wanted to propose, and we, at, going along with our proposal, is that uh, we're willing to donate it to the town. We're going to pay for it. We'll maintain it. Any nets or any things that need to be replaced moving forward we will be our responsibility. Um, we just ask you to allow us to put it there and, and, and use it for the varsity programs. We're also allowing uh, any program that plays at that field as well, is, uh, you know, we're willing to let them use it as well. Uh, Babe Ruth, uh, the Bulldogs, anybody who may use that field um, is more than happy to use it as long as they understand what, they, what it is and what they're using it for. Um, so from that standpoint, that's our proposal. Um, I'm at here tonight to ask you to accept the gift, and hopefully you will, and it, this will only be the beginning of things that I hope we can do in the future for capital improvements for baseball and for the town of Reading. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Any, um, well, let's start yeah. off with the motion. Uh, move that the board accept the gift from the Friends of Reading High School Baseball as <coughs> presented. Discussion on the topic. No second. Oh, sorry. Barry seconded. I heard him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Discussion. I guess uh, a big thank you yeah. from the board to uh, you folks for making this possible. Thank you. Yeah, th th this, it's fantastic. It's a, a ni very nice piece of equipment, and I dare I say it'll be a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a vote. I, I'd just like to, yes. um, in the interest of disclosure, um, everyone in the room needs to be aware of the fact that I sit on the board of this organization and have endorsed this, and therefore I'm not going to vote in the process here. I only remained in the room normally when I find myself with a potential conflict, I actually leave the room. But I thought if there were additional questions, I, because this is kind of one of my passions, and I, you know, the decision that uh, when when Coach Blanchard said that he needed this, and um, our board, uh, meaning the Friends of Reading High School Baseball, was able to respond. This is not inexpensive. It's a very important safety item, and it really adds you know, enormously to the yeah. program, not just of the varsity baseball, but as, as Ray has pointed out, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it becomes a piece of town property maintained by the organization and um, for the use of everybody, really, you know, right down to the younger kids. And that's, 
I can't impress the safety factor of this more. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you've ever been down at a baseball field while they're having batting practice and the ball's going all over the place and the kids are all over the place, this keeps everything very focused. So I will not be voting. Um, again, just disclosing, you know, where I come from on this, and but I am extremely supportive of this. Thank, thank you, John. Um, <coughs> any more, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carries <coughs> four, zero. four zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for your thank generosity. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your Thanks. work and generosity. <coughs> okay, discover the arts. Okay, Matt, wherever you are. Hi, Matt Cornelis, Administrative Services. Um, I'm here to tell you about Discover the Arts and Reading Day, which will be on October 13th and run from 10 to 2 at the Town Common. Um, Joe Leto and Tom Coughlin are here to tell you about more of the details of the event, who's going to be there. It's the first time we're doing this in Reading, so we're hoping for a really big success. Um, so I'm going to turn it over right now to uh, Tom, and also Amy Landon is here if she wants to say anything about it as well. She's part of the team. Thanks. Good evening. Uh, the organizations that are taking part are listed on the right side of the uh, image projected there. Uh, we have, have had two groups had to uh, pull out. They sent their uh, regrets. The Chamber of Commerce is not, not going to be able to participate. Lisa Egan said between now and the uh, holidays, she is going to be so busy she just doesn't have time and she could not find anyone else to staff a booth. And the same is true for the Garden Club. They're not able to uh, find anybody to staff a booth. We also lost one of our performing groups, uh, the Encore Dance Academy, said they're not going to be able to do it because we were not able to get a stage. We were trying. We couldn't get one. And she said she would prefer that the kids not be dancing on the pavement. So we are down to three, three groups performing that day. And uh, there's not going to be any food or drink sold. So we are telling all of our participating groups to bring their own food and drink. Um, I spoke with the safety officer. He is going to have a electronic signboard on the common beginning on October 7th, advertising the, the, the event. So I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. Yes. Um, Tom, can you just, I mean, I, I know we're, we're, we're sort of time starved a little bit, but I, I, I do want to acknowledge all the work that your organization has done in pulling myriad of arts groups together in town, cultural groups in town, to try to form some type of an umbrella right. group. Um, and, and you know, I, I think that if you counted the number of people that participate in the various different cultural groups and arts groups in town, it would probably rival the number of kids playing baseball. So, and, it, and it's not just kids, it's adults um, right. from all, all ages. So I, I, I think it's a tremendous of what you're trying to do. But can you like just take 90 seconds and really just sort of talk about Arts Reading and sort of what ultimately your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish and ways that can kind of get folks excited. Sure. Uh, we formed in 2014 after the uh, town had a consultant conduct a study to uh, look into the feasibility of creating a cultural district in the downtown. And since then, we have participated in the, uh, the uh, Garden Club's plant sale on the common. We've been a part of Friends and Family Day. We've been a part of the street fair, the fall street fair. But we've never had our own event, and we thought it was about time we did that. We thought that was a good way for us to get the name of Arts Reading out into the, into the community. So our, our goals are twofold. One is to bring as many arts and cultural groups as, as we can under our umbrella to help advocate for the arts. And the other is to one day see a cultural district in the downtown area. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. And pray for sunshine. If I can briefly add, too, although people aren't allowed to bring food and drink to the festival, we're encouraging them to visit all the local businesses, restaurants downtown, and we're going to be providing them with a with a map, I hope, of downtown businesses to visit. So, so there'll be there'll be options there. And Excellent. thank you for your time. Thanks, Matt. 
So moving on to a half an hour late, moving on to our uh, stakeholders meeting, I'd like to invite our guests, the school committee and the superintendent. So a, a, a member, you, you can sit up here, Elaine. You're, you're an elected member. That's okay. That's fine. Yeah, and people can, you, you guys can move up so we can all be a little closer and yeah, nobody ever does, of course. There's four seats right in the front. So, so um, the vice chair is going to is going to run this segment of the of the meeting. I just wanted to re reiterate uh, the the purpose or the goal of the meeting, what we're trying to get out of this. As you know, in July uh, 19th, the uh, the board voted on a statement, and at the end of the statement, um, uh, committed to uh, taking additional doing additional responses. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have um, my, the document in front of me because it's, uh, I don't have internet access. But, uh, so the point is really looking forward. It is not to uh, uh, look back at, I, other than to see how we might improve things moving forward, um, handle these incidences better uh, or, or improve on that moving forward. Um, so it's not a night to uh, pick on a specific group for what they did or did not do. It's really for, um, to generate ideas for this, for this board. So we want to hear from you, the stakeholders, who are people who have worked uh, closely with this sort of vandalism. Um, does HRAC need to be called to order? Okay. Do you have a quorum? Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. So, um, can talk as individuals. <sighs> mm. This presents an open meeting law problem. Um, it, it, we'd like to hear from you. Um, but I, I think, Bob, to be safe. It's best that you not have a quorum in the room all at the same time. But the buddy system's okay in and out of the room. Yeah. Yep. So, so talk amongst yourselves and recognize that it's best not to have a full quor a full quorum in the... Just a revolving potty break. <laughs> right. Does that make sense? I don't think I'll be leaving, Heather, so I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay. <laughs> I'm glad so many are here, but... Um, <clears throat> all right, over to Barry. So, um, thanks, Andy. Just to, to kind of follow up, um, Andy and I spent a little bit of time sort of thinking about how to organize this conversation. And again, I, th I think I want to sort of pose this really as a conversation. Not, I know we're sitting behind desks and, and you guys are in the audience, but I really would like to think of this as the beginnings of a conversation. So when we got together and thought about, you know, what can we do as members of the select board to sort of forward this conversation, um, we decided that we wanted to focus this discussion really around four questions. And those Jewish people in the room will get the <laughs> irony of the four questions. Um, and, the, and, and so I'd like, and so the discussion I'd like to sort of, I, I know folks are free to say what they want, um, but if we can kind of focus the conversation around these four questions, I think it will give us a real good starting point to sort of figuring out some of the things that we can do and um, collectively, individually. Um, so, I don't want, I'm not gonna do the questions sort of like, at, well, first question one, then people talk, and question two, I'm gonna just lay out the questions and we're gonna start talking about it. So the first question is, what do you see as the root causes of the problem? And what's its impact on you, personally, 
and in the greater community as a whole. Second, specifically, where and how do you think the board and town government can take action? Again, specifically. Number three, what else may be needed outside of the realm of town government to address this problem? And how can we, how can we support those efforts? And then four, what are next steps for the select board and town government? And more importantly, or as importantly, what are the next steps for you? So, um, I know we have an hour on the calendar, you know, scheduled. Um, we're not gonna have timekeepers. Um, we're not gonna have, um, you know, we're not gonna have a, a clock or, or ticking. But, you know, there are a lot of people here who came, and, I, and I'm sure a lot of people who have something to say. So, what I'm gonna do as, as sort of, I, I kind of run this, and, and hopefully my colleagues can help me, because again, we're not really suited in the best physical space. Um, you know, being able to see raised hands. Um, but just yep. keep your comments brief. If someone said what you said, you know, say something else, um, because we do want to leave a lot of room for some discussion, some back and forth potentially, if it lends itself to that, um, but also to give everybody a chance who wants it to, to speak to, to say something. So that said, um, I'd like to start the conversation. And I see Tali's hand rising right up. Um, so I think probably what's best is for everybody to go to the microphone just so, and say your name, so that people can hear you here and also on TV. Um, hi, I'm Tali Shore. I'm a senior here at RMHS and um, a Jewish student. Um, and uh, this, this kind of incident with the graffiti has been kind of We've noticed it's been happening for about two years now, a little less than two years. And since I did find one of the first um, swastikas drawn, um, I think that it, it made me feel, as a Jewish student at this, at this school, it made me feel very um, unsafe in this community, especially with, after some discussion of the of the problem, some people saying. Tali, can can I just ask you maybe move the microphone a little closer, or oh. you stand just a little closer? Bend, just yeah, bend it down. You have a lot to say, and we want to hear. Okay, should I continue from where I was? No, you did right from where you were. Okay, yeah. um, uh, as not only do I feel unsafe seeing those symbols around the school, um, but also after some discussion of um, why why you know about why that's wrong hearing other some of my peers saying why are why do you care so much about this like calm down learn how to take a joke that that was really upsetting to hear <laughs> that that having a community around that was that my peers were not that supportive of this and understanding that this is a serious issue that also makes me feel unsafe at in my school as a Jewish student and just as a student because it's it's just a very toxic environment <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like? Is that uh, I, Becky? Is that you? Okay. <coughs> Hi, Rebecca Lieberman, Fifty Pratt Street. I just wanted to um, make a request of the select board and the school committee and everyone else. Um, some of the things that we have not been doing that I wish we would do and I think would really help. Number one is not to call it vandalism. We need to call it swastikas or a, a statement, gas the Jews was written. I don't think that sweeping it under the rug, uh, to me, like graffiti incident means, you know, a uh, swear word on the bathroom stall. This is more than that, and I think that the community could mount more of a response if they realized what this was. I think a lot of people are still not aware that it's happening also, so I think we could do a much better job sharing information. We need to blast out maybe just the way we get an automated phone call when there's a street closure or pipeline work. Maybe we should get a phone call when there's an incident like this. Um, because it affects the whole community. Just because it was written at Parker doesn't mean that if I live on Temple Street, even if I don't have kids at Parker, as a Jewish person in town, that does not make me feel safe or comfortable. And the last thing is, um, 
uh, it makes it impossible to track. My son was very active in red uh, until he graduated. Uh, last spring, and uh, they were trying to document in one of the meetings how many incidents there have been, or to find photos, and there seemed, and nobody could tell. Um, we know it's more than 10, um, but we don't know exactly how many, and I think that it would be helpful to get the word out there. I think that hiding it is is just making it worse. It, it makes Jewish people in town, like myself, for example, feel like nobody cares. And I know that's not true. So I just think that those would be a couple of things that could be done now that I think would really help, in my opinion. Thank you. So, so Becky, thank you for that. No, I, I, that, that. That's good. So the issue of, I, I guess what one of the things that Becky said is the issue of reporting um, and sort of what gets out and when and to whom and to how. So I know that there's the town and the schools have worked together when there's been issues of when this has happened on the schools, but maybe um, Deputy Chief or Superintendent Doherty or Bob, you know, someone could talk about sort of, because I think that that's a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, a piece that would give some folks comfort about some of the things that the protocols are, some of the things that y y you can do that maybe aren't doing, some of the things that you just can't do because of the way some of the, you know, the laws and privacy and things are done. Um, just so that folks understand what the, you know, how it all works. So, uh, I thank, think. yeah, thank you, Barry. I I meant to have um, Acting Chief Clark come up at the beginning of this conversation. Um, I apologize. So, um, yeah. I just want to. This might be a good time to, to maybe do okay. that. Okay. Uh, thank you for inviting me here tonight, and thank you for the members of the public that have come. These type of incidents are particularly difficult to investigate. Usually these type of incidents don't have a witness, don't have, they're not done in front of cameras. And whereas if somebody's out, let's say, smashing a, a car window, smashing a glass building, triggers noise, triggers maybe somebody looking out, see somebody running away, we're responding, maybe we can catch somebody, it triggers a witness. These type of crimes, because they are silent, it, marking a building, even spray painting, it's silent, it doesn't trigger us for witnesses. So us as police officers, this is particularly frustrating for us because there's not a lot of leads. We don't have a lot of leads, there's not a lot for us to go on. Um, personally, this does touch home for me. My wife is Jewish, and so it does have a personal note to me, and we take all crimes seriously, but this one particularly hits close to home for me. When we investigate, uh, we ex um, exhaust every lead we can. Um, like I said, most frustrating for us is there are no leads. Uh, when it comes to the schools, we have a great relationship with the schools. I, I would say better than probably any town around us. Um, Dr. Doherty meets regularly with Lieutenant Detective Abadi, who's in charge of our investigation unit, and the school resource officers, Brian Lewis and Matt Thatcher. Um, they work regularly, and we, there's a lot of communication going back and forth, and we work very hard together to try to help. One of the restrictions we have, and one of the, where it's a little bit less formal for the schools and us is, if they were to investigate and if the schools um, want to talk to somebody, and particularly if it's a juvenile, it's a lot less formal of a process for the schools than it is for us. And for the teachers or the superintendent to, or the principal to talk to somebody, it's a lot less formal of a process. For us to come in as police officers and talk to somebody, it automatically triggers Miranda, and if they're juvenile, we automatically have to have a parent or a guardian there with us. Whereas they have a little bit more, um, I would say less formal. It's less, it's less, we have more flexibility. And because it's also a teacher or principal that they're used to seeing every single day, talking to them, usually the people are a lot more forthcoming or it's an easier conversation than a police officer. Now, granted, the town's done a great job. Seeing two uniformed officers in the school on a daily basis has made it more approachable to police officers, but still, you get called in a room and the principal's there, but you get called in a room and there's a uniformed police officer in there, and we'll start reading Miranda and the parents are there, it's a different process, so we let, any, any school incident, we let the school basically take the lead on, and correct me if, please, Rachel, I'll speak out of mind. We let the schools take the lead on just because the formality of the process is a lot different, um, and they can usually help us with a lot more. We have to be very careful giving out information, though, when it comes to a juvenile, because there are very strict and stringent juvenile laws and what we can and can't say, what we can and can't reveal. And so it's the process, like I said, it's different from the schools. Outside the schools, it's a very formal process for us. Any investigation would trigger Miranda, and if it's a juvenile and parents being there or legal guardian. But again, our, our biggest problem and our biggest frustration is the lack of leads. 
um, we would, trust me, I, I, it's, it's very frustrating for us. And it's, we're as police officers, we're problem solvers. We love to solve a crime. There's nothing better than coming to a closure. This is very frustrating for us, and it's one of those crimes that it just, it's very unlikely we're gonna get closure just based on the nature of crime itself. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I wanna echo what Deputy Chief you. Clark said um, in terms of the flexibility that schools have versus what the police have. We actually are able to search lockers and uh, backpacks and things like that. We don't need a search warrant. Um, yeah because we're, we have the ability by, by law, case law, actually, to be able to do that. Um, and what, he's, uh, you know, what he said earlier also is that, and we actually were having this conversation today, is that teachers, administrators have those built-in relationships because they see the kids on a daily basis, and they're able to have those types of conversations more readily. So um, if students have good, strong relationships with adults, um, they will go to them. Um, and that also will help, obviously, the police as well. Um, in terms of communication, we have an internal protocol. Uh, once um, a SWAT sticker or any type of graffiti is found, um, we have a whole internal piece, which includes communication to police, communication to facilities, communication to my office, um, depending on which building it is, um, so that we can start the ball rolling. And then from that point is when we decide what we're gonna say, how we're gonna say it, what, you know, what, it, what and who it goes out to. Thank you. Um, one of the challenges also in terms of coordinating and communicating is that um, it's very easy to identify um, a swastika or some other um, graffiti in a public location that you know it wasn't there the day before. So I know what day that happened or I know within three or four days that it happened. Um, I would guess almost half or approximately half of the uh, graffiti that has been found was done in sweeps. So it could have been there That's true. for three days, it could have been there for 30 years. We just don't know. So that's, that's a challenge not only to solve, certainly, but also how do we report that? Do we say, you know, 17 things were just found in a sweep? It's, it's just been tricky, it's just been difficult. Um, so quite, quite often, again, many of the uh, uh, graffitis that were found, we just don't have a way to date it. Um, it's been found in some extremely obscure places, under desks and just in very small sizes. Um, you know, I'll give uh, both the police and schools a lot of credit and facilities. They exhaustively looked at the building under all the chairs here sitting on. Um, so again, some of these could have been here for quite some time, just to make that clear. Okay. Um, Anyone else? Like, oh, Gina? Group? Jamie, Gina? Linda? Hi, I'm Gina McCormick, um, and I've asked uh, the folks from me or the mic? No, the mic. <laughs> your, vo your voice. I don't think you can make this all talk. <laughs> yeah. um, be a rock Gina star. Gina from Red. There and you I've go. I've asked our um, Red, some of our Red, Red leadership team is here also. Um, and we, um, in June of 2018, when the, the latest incident, uh, the latest vandalism, the la latest hate symbol um, and hate language appeared in our school, uh, Red, put together specifically a task team within our leadership and within our group um, to come up with recommendations for this very occasion. Um, so we have several that we've worked on for many months. Uh, we have um, had ongoing discussions with the ADL um, for the past year or so, continued those this summer. Um, we met with the new high school principal. Uh, we also met with um, a group uh, from the police department uh, Deputy Chief Clark, uh, Lieutenant Abadi, and also um, the Chief uh, also, and had a great meeting there. We also uh, have had several community listening meetings um, with folks in uh, from Reading, uh, not just our membership, but folks who wanted to speak about this. So um, we've compiled things uh, from the community. Um, so if you want to give us some leeway, we may all yeah, no, I, that, uh, report on those, yeah, if that's please. okay. Um, you want to go first? 
start from the top? Yeah, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, we, I mean, we're, we're writing all this down. Yeah. So, you know, it's... We'll, be, we'll, we'll also be glad to provide you with our suggestions. That would be well. actually helpful. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Be great. Um, I'm Reverend Jamie Before Michaels. Tamer. I'm the senior pastor at Old South United Methodist Church. I've been working with Reading Embraces Diversity for a little over a year now. Um, so we want to um, commend and recognize and thank you for your work, especially in your um, in your statement of um, June 19th, where you publicly recognized the deep impact that these disturbing crimes have on our children, our friends, and our neighbors. And we want to encourage you to um, commit to continuing to publicly dispel the myth that words and symbols do not matter. Um, as a Christian pastor, one of my favorite theologians says that the symbol speaks, no matter how if whether we interpret it or not, the symbol is going to speak. So it's going to speak to some people differently than it is going to speak to others. And if we fail to interpret that symbol, then it's still going to speak for, for, our, for our students, for our friends, for our neighbors, and for our families. And so it, it is incumbent upon us as leaders of the community to interpret that symbol, right? We've heard time and again in our listening meetings that the first step in addressing these acts of hate needs to be a recognition that the impact on our community, the impact on our community and not the intent of a perpetrator should be the measure of harm. And so it's important not to, um, not to dismiss um, the, the intent of um, who it was who was writing the, the symbols of hate and the messages of hate, but focus on the impact that it had on the folks who discover them, right? Um, and so uh, the, I think the, the biggest thing that we can ask of you is that the select board appoint a, appoint a point person to oversee and coordinate the protocols for reporting these acts of hate. So um, we have some ideas for what kinds of things that person would do, but some of them um, certainly would include um, keeping all the stakeholders timely informed about future incidents, uh, to receive updates on the ongoing investigations, um, so much as the law allows. Um, to coordinate communication on these issues to the town at large, and to establish protocols to increase communication between the police, the select board, and the town. So I'm Janice Grant Menace. I live at 16 Osborne Avenue. I'm a parent. I'm an educator and I'm a Jewish community member. Um, so <laughs> I have to decide which one we, we, we prepared extensively for this and we have something written so that we would be happy to share after the meeting. Um, but one of the things that we talked about was um, we met with the, the police department and um, we, discovered that there were some pieces of information um, that were in recent months that the community considered significant and they were not communicated effectively. It's not to point fingers, it's just to talk about how to do this better, but um, there was a graffiti case that was closed because the perpetrator was identified, interviewed, confessed, and disp disposition was handled through the department's diversion process. That is a huge, um, thing to hear because I think that people are just like, what is happening? It doesn't matter if we have a name or the details, but just that something happened to show the importance that, you know, that somebody's doing something, they care, not that we don't take it at face value that you say you're doing it, but um, some of the, some of the uh, information that was found out at this meeting would have had <coughs> made a lot of community members feel um, more protected or more cared for. Um, also, in uh, sometime after the June 2018 incident, which of course was the most escalated, horrifying incident that happened with the uh, gas the Jews, um, the police cooperated it with the Attorney General in Massachusetts and the FBI to review Redding's recent history of anti-Semitic vandalism. <coughs> Determination was made during the review that they do not rise to the level of hate crimes and um, you know, that is a really hard thing to prove and we understand that's hate crimes. They're called acts of hate still. They're still hateful and they're still crimes. I mean, if vandalism is a crime, not a little graffiti as Rebecca said earlier. But knowing that 
people were brought in, that it was taken seriously, that it was significant enough to talk to the state and the federal government about it to make sure that what we're doing is we're on the right path. And to have communicated that to the whole community would have been wonderful. And I think that's part of like what informs us to have a better communication system. Because <coughs> it was, I mean, it's not, it doesn't make it go away, it doesn't make it any better, but it's a relief to hear. Um, there were also two incidents that were reported to the police that Red has since identified as hate-related, but that were not communicated to the Human Relations Advisory Committee. So there, you know, there's a whole loop that, uh, of people who need to be included in these things because um, we're, Red is working with whoever, you know, with, with ATRAC, with the police, with the school system, with the select board, with um, the community. So I think that if everybody needs to know, we can't like kind of hide what's going on here, and then we can take action better going forward. Hi, I'm Linda Snow Doxer, and I wear a variety of hats right now. I am wearing my citizen hat my red hat, and actually a hat that some of you met me wearing um, in 2012, which was part of a temple committee. Uh, I'm also a Jewish um, person living in Reading, and I came and I visited Reading, uh, Wakefield and a number of other towns as a messenger for a um, lot of people in our temple who had shared their concern about how challenging it is to live Jewishly in a non-Jewish world. And I came in 2012 to our then school committee, it was before I was ever on the school committee, and to the town as well, the Board of Selectmen. And was we, it was a group of us, were very warmly received. Um, people listened to how it feels when we're trying to live according to our customs in a world that just doesn't understand. Um, and so when I got involved with Red, that's one of the things I think that I shared with some of the people at the table in terms of we were also Jewish, but also um, that I shared with those who weren't Jewish um, in terms of how it feels. Um, and when we presented, we brought, when um, I was on the Shlichut or Messenger committee, we shared how it felt when there were mandatory meetings on the holidays, when um, we need to intervene to say that we can't come to a meeting that's really important because we're Jewish and it's the high holidays and we're in temple from 10 in the morning until 6.30 at night. Um, and then um, to to clarify the misconceptions about the holidays, which in Judaism, it's a traveling calendar. Um, so it's a different calendar. So our holidays are not on the same day every year, which makes it really hard and really understandable when mistakes are made because, well, but last year it was in October. Why is it September this year? It's really hard for towns and schools to plan around a moving target. And so that's where um, the education comes in. And, and also with Jewish holidays, it starts the night before, not on the day of the holiday. Just another confusing factor. And it lasts like other holidays till after dinner, even though that's not an official part of the holiday. So the education is a big part of it. And that's something that Reading Embraces Diversity has been engaged in and something that the town can also help convey the messages. Um, and also, um, a very common response to, well, but we can have the meeting that night because it's really hard to schedule this timing and it only excludes a few people. Well, it's excluding a defined community from that meeting and in reality, you really don't know how many people are being excluded because there are a lot of mixed families who, even though they might have a Christmas tree, also celebrate the Jewish high holidays. Or even though um, they have an Easter dinner, might also have a Passover Seder. 
it's really not that clear. And we need to be a town that makes people feel safe to say I'm Jewish or to say that I celebrate these holidays. And one way to do that is through education, and another way is through establishing policies so that the people who are Jewish don't have to defend their time all the time. And it's one thing to do it, and I know the town has worked very hard. I've gotten phone calls from the town manager and other people in the town saying, can you help me? Um, I thought it ended now. And, and it's absolutely honest mistakes. Um, and it's just, you know, well, next year we'll do better. But when there's an accommodation policy and when it becomes a part of the <coughs> calendar of the town, so that whether it's Eid for the Muslim holiday or whether it's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur for the Jewish holidays, they're in, in the purview. And so people are thinking about it when they schedule their meetings. And so one of the recommendations of Reading Embraces Diversity was that um, the town and the select board consciously adopt an accommodation policy for ethnic and religious observance so that um, that will be something to refer to. And when it gets tough and people push and say, but it doesn't impact many people, you can say, but we have a policy. And this is what we do because we have citizens for whom planning events on these days impacts. I've missed town meetings when I lived in Wakefield. I've missed important meetings because I had to be, I had to be in Temple. And so creating some kind of policy that will help the select board, will help the town, will help people understand might be one approach. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. We've been doing this for 5,779 years. We can figure out <laughs> how to do it. That's but all. everyone hasn't been doing it. No. <laughs> can I ask Linda a question? <coughs> sure. Yeah. Linda, a quick question. You sent us an email which I can't access, um, but I believe it, it indicated a number of other um, uh, sort of symbols of hate outside yes. uh, of the schools. I, I, would you mind just presenting that here so that people get an idea that it's just not a kid or, or, or sure. it um, doesn't just happen in the schools, the library? One of my other roles was as past chair, a member and past chair of the Human Relations Advisory Committee. And when I was on that committee, we had um, reports of swastikas in town and racial epitaphs, racial slurs, sorry. Um, and so what I sent to the select board and the town manager were pictures, one, there were three examples of how things have happened outside in the town. When I first came on in 2014, there had been a swastika, swastika drawn in a public bathroom downtown. And I was new to the committee and I ended up going and interviewing people that lived in that complex. Um, and it turned out that some of the people were Holocaust survivors. Some of them had people who had family who had emigrated um, for safety from Europe um, to be here. And having a swastika drawn in their area, um, in their home, was really upsetting. It just stripped them of the safety. What I included in that letter was the press release that we ended up writing um, for the local papers which outlined what you should do if you find a symbol of hate or um, witness a crime um, because what happened in that incident was the people were so upset they erased it. The proprietor of the restaurant nearby they didn't want it in their public bathroom, so they erased it. And so the police had no evidence with which to investigate. So that was one thing that I included for your packet. The second thing that I included was um, racial slurs and swastikas that were written on cars in snow across from the train station at Thanksgiving in 2014. That was not, we don't know who did it but it wasn't 
in a school. It was right out there. It impacted anybody that went out for a Thanksgiving walk or, you know, that, that passed it by. And it was really powerful. It was white power and swastikas. And um, if you see the picture of it, it's very hard to dismiss. And then the third thing that I included in the packet was an example of how even if it doesn't happen exactly within the borders of our town, it impacts our town. And that was um, pictures and an article from a local paper about the vandalism that occurred at Bear Hill Golf Club. There were something like 20 something golf carts that were vandalized and spray painted with swastikas and racial slurs. Um, and it's right over the border. I have friends and neighbors that belong to that club. And I took it incredibly personally because the violence with which these golf clubs, these golf carts, sorry, not golf clubs, the golf carts were ruined and vandalized was immense. And if you just extrapolate a little bit, the hate that causes people to do that, whether we talked about intent versus impact, to me, if I'd been in the wrong place at the wrong time and people knew I was Jewish, who knows? Yeah. It's very frightening, it's very real, it's very here, and it comes from outside. It's not just our town. It's my hometown of Marblehead. It's Newton, it's Brookline, Melrose. It's, it's all around us, and it's important, I think, that we all make a commitment to not let it happen here, and when we do that, it will empower each one of us to stand up to it. When we find out about it, when we see it, we'll know we're not alone. And it will enable us to report it and not be afraid. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. Laura, are you gonna jump in? <coughs> yes. Hi, so I'm Lori Houghton. I live on 385 Summer Ave, and I'm a member of RED. I am also a former member of HRAC. I served on HRAC for around 10 years, and I was um, chair for a while, co-chair with Linda for a while. Um, I'm also, my job, I work at Lincoln Sudbury Regional High School, and I am the Safe Schools Coordinator, and I'm responsible for coordinating all sorts of trainings, diversity trainings, violence prevention trainings. Um, and I would like to speak about the, um, the need for um, training. Um, the Anti-Defamation League has already trained some school officials, and they are going to train the Reading Police. Um, and um, also, I would encourage other town leaders and town staff to get trained by the Anti-Defamation League. Having these kinds of conversations around these topics of anti-Semitism and racism is really difficult, and we adults need to model for young people how to have respectful conversations across difference. Um, so I think that we really would benefit from training from the Anti-Defamation League. Um, so it sounds like that um, Red, some of us, met with um, the chief, and the chief agreed um, it's important to get the training um, and made a commitment to start with the seven detectives in the department. So that's awesome. Um, and then I would just like to encourage um, to see it happen expand the meeting and the adults who get um, trained. Finally, my most important role is I'm a Jewish mom and my, um, our three kids went through Reading schools, got a great education, and our youngest graduated two years ago, and unfortunately she um, was exposed to anti-Semitic jokes from her friends and her acquaintances, um, and she kind of concluded that it was ignorance more than anything else that was causing these really very um, harsh anti-Semitic jokes. So I want to, and this is just me speaking as a Jewish mom, not as a member of RED. Um, my daughter Ruthie and her friend Jess Squires and um, some other high school students, they 
for the student reps for the um, Human Relations Advisory Committee. They were really committed to make changes. Um, Jess Squires, who is an AP STAT student at the time, did this extensive survey. Um, so I um, think that we adults really need to model that we take this very seriously. And I think the human rights um, resolution is an important way to symbolically have all the adults on the same page. Um, so I would encourage um, the adults, again, modeling that this is really serious, that we are going to work together, Jewish people and non-Jewish people, police and school committee, um, just people from all different kinds of committees working together to model for our students and our young people that this is a really important, serious problem that we can um, empower each other to um, make a difference and make change. Because it's also the students who are going to be the ones who provide the leads, and I hear your frustration that they're not leads, <coughs> actionable leads to follow up on. So we really need to show students that they can be um, part of the solution by kind of <coughs> helping their peers make better choices. And when they see something, if they say it, when they see it, that provides much fresher evidence for investigations. Thank you. Laura, can I just ask you one quick, don't, don't look away yeah. yet. So you referenced um, uh, training that the ADL does um, for adults. I know that the ADL, uh, uh, you know, with kids, they have the World of Difference campus. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of yep. kids that get involved on the high school, I think just high school, I'm not Middle sure. School also. Middle, middle school too. Yep. Um, and, and they work together. Can you just t briefly just talk a little bit about what that training looks like for the adults? And is it a day-long thing? Is it a month-long thing? Is um, you know? So. I've only, so Phil Fogelman, who is the director of the ADL, I've spoken to him as a capacity for my job at Lincoln Sudbury, but did some people talk to him? Like, I think it varies. So there could be a one-day training that they send. They have all sorts of different trainers that they send to locations. So it could be a one-day training. Um, there are all sorts of different kinds of activities based on um, kind of raising awareness about the issue and the problems, and then to um, other activities to um, to provide tools to have conversations, like guidelines and the pyramid of um, hate. So there's all sorts of different kinds of trainings that are possible. So. I mean, I think a full day training, like the adults, if there was like a full day retreat, that would provide an opportunity for both the introspection about raising awareness about each of our identities, how our backgrounds influence our decision making, and then also like the tools to have the constructive conversations. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Lori. Lori, um, <coughs> just to follow up on your, your daughter's report of uh, hearing some anti-Semitic jokes, um, at least one of my kids, maybe two, they're, they're all a blur, have, um, have, have, have told me I was shocked. <coughs> like in gym class, um, a Jewish kid will leave the group and some somebody will make a very uh, horrible joke about that, the kid being Jewish. I, I was, I just was shocked. So it's out there. Kids are doing this, um, and I agree. We need to model, role model better. No, because Ruthie felt so confused and upset, and it was really hard as her mom to support her because she didn't understand why someone who she's friendly with would, you know, kind of make an offhanded joke about the Holocaust. You know, when her, you know, her great grandparents, a lot of their relatives perished in the Holocaust. Yeah. So to kind of joke around about chimneys. Yeah, it was just really awful. Poor taste. Yeah. It's just silly. So just to close a couple okay. of loops there. Um, so one of the things that we heard in our um, in our listening around in different groups was that um, uh, maybe um, nobody was really holding the ball on um, who students were supposed to go to specifically if they had um, if if they. Uh, uh, to borrow a language from borrow language from my son, if they had to dish the tea, like if they had to, how do what? If they had to dish the tea, if they had if they had a secret to tell, <laughs> if oh. they um, had special information Got about um, about one of these incidents, um, who specifically they should go to. Um, so we heard a lot of generalities. <laughs> so right? you're talking about in school? In school, right? John, John is that is, is this some? Can you address that now? I, 
I think you probably should just let her. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, so one of our um, suggestions is that um, is that the the school department in consultation with the police create a specific protocol for that, um, so that there be a, a point person or some um, some protocol for um, students to be aware of who it is they're supposed to go to. Like, do they first go to the guidance office? Do they go to their homeroom teacher? Is you know like, and once that information gets passed on, um, do the teachers then know who they're supposed to go to? Just so that 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 order of operations is really clear. And then um, to close, sort of one more um, loop. Um, I just want to say that um, when uh, Red met with the police department, actually when we had all of our meetings around town, um, folks have been really eager excited to participate in this conversation and I, I'm, I want to express our gratitude for that. Um, we can really tell that, that everybody is eager to be um to be participatory and to um, and to engage our community in um, in taking steps forward. Um, so I want to celebrate that the chief has already made the commitment to train the detectives with the ADL. Um, and I want to um, support that the the chief has agreed that um, it would be a good idea for us to review the protocols for how things are reported from the police department to HRAC. Um, and so I would ask that we commit to um, facilitating some increased communication between the police and ATRAC, um, especially about um, hate-related or possible hate-related reports and investigations. So um, it's clear that when a swastika shows up, um, that's obviously something that's going to be reported. Um, but especially in a time when, um, when white power and white supremacy and all sorts of things are connected, um, are connected together with the swastika and with other instances of, um, of hate speech, racial slurs, um, and white supremacy. We want to be sensitive to um, the ways that these things might be connected, not only in the schools, but all around town. We want to make sure that everybody has all of the, the most up-to-date information that they can. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I make one statement? Um, first of all, uh, th there was a, we've identified a breakdown in communication. Um, some information did not get to me. As a result, I want to apologize. I know Josh isn't here, but to Heather, who's the vice chair of HRAC, um, it buck stops here. Information did not get to HRAC that should have, and I apologize for that. We have identified that breakdown in communication, and we've already worked to fix that. Yeah, and I just wanted to apologize to Heather and the other Keong, and I'm not sure else to say from HRAC. I just want to apologize that we've identified it, we've worked on it, and I, it's very important that the communication lines stay open, and I just wanted to, I'll take the hit for that as the uh, head of it, okay? Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any, anybody else want? Oh. Oh. We, we've clearly been thinking a lot about this over the past few months. Okay. <laughs> um, but I think I, this is... I just want to let, I, you know, because we are time, so I know, I, there are some I folks that want to... Just the last one. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so thank you for... We're sort of all speaking together, and we yeah. won't speak again as, as individuals, I don't think. But um, the last one, I just want to... Um, we were trying to think of ways that the town could sort of put this work out in front, make a commitment, understand that it's a priority, communicate that to the community, that this is a priority um, of, of our leaders. And one way um, we could do that is um, if the select board formed a subcommittee or a task force um, to do some research on establishing some sort of board committee or commission that would sit between the town and school sides um, to sort of bring together in a purposeful, um, permanent way the collaboration that's going on right now um, between the schools and the towns on these issues um, and to take the town's work on these issues out from sort of an advisory role to the select board and elevate it um, into a, uh, a board committee and commission uh, that has a sort of community-wide priority to it. Um, so there is... Uh, I think still a standing human rights uh, working group with the select board, so that might be a place to, to put this task force. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark? <coughs> Thank you all. Mark Doxer, <coughs> um, 110 Beaver Road, um, also a member of the Reading Jewish community. Just a, a couple of points I wanted to reiterate, just so you're hearing it from some other folks as well. Um, one is we're being indoctrinated very appropriately so that see something, say something is a very important aspect of everything that goes on. And I think Linda made the point, and I think Jamie did too, that how someone should react if you witness 
the problem or discover the problem. Just making sure that everyone understands that, not just in the schools, but in the town. Um, I think that's a very important, consistent message that we can have because a crime is being committed. <coughs> Number two, I know this is something that can't be talked about by you folks, but I can talk about it. As we upgrade security systems around the town, I would hope that this is the kind of thing we're thinking about also. Because, you know, how can we, in cases where there is a discovery and an understanding of timing, we might have better information. Number three, repercussions, even if people are not identified. Um, knowing that action's been taken. Again, this was brought up. I think it helps people who have been hurt to understand that something took place, and perhaps it makes others know that there are repercussions and that you're gonna get caught. It's not something you can just do and get away with. Uh, I wanna echo the need to share information with the community. Even if it's bad news, it's news that needs to be shared. And I, we've just discussed kind of protocols for that. I think that's very important. Um, lastly, need the town to support those impacted by hate symbols and crimes by making affirmative statements, whether it's the human rights resolution or other activities. I think it's important that the town make clear that this isn't part of our value system and it's not something that we're gonna put up with. Thank you. Thank you. Heather? Heather McLean, I'm the current Secretary of the Human Relations Advisory Committee, former chair, um, standing in for Josh Goldbust, our current chair, who couldn't make it tonight. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update. Uh, our committee has also been discussing this for, um, well, a long time now. <laughs> um, and uh, I definitely agree with, you know, we as a committee, uh, what we've been discussing really falls in line with a lot of what's already been said. Um, but as far as um, our recommendations to the board as an advisory committee, um, the main takeaway that we've heard from um, both our committee members and also um, people in the community who have come forward to our meetings uh, in recent uh, months due to all of these different um, incidents is that we really need to send a message as a community, um, community-wide, town-wide, not just um, the school's uh, community. So um, one of the, th you know, we've been brainstorming different um, reactions and um, uh, kind of active uh, ways that we could um, come together as a town to show that we won't stand for um, these kind of uh, symbols of hate in our community. Um, and um, kind of as far as uh, planning an event, um, our, our best idea so far <laughs> is uh, we've, we've, we'd really like to kind of bring together both a showing of solidarity with the Jewish community as well as um, uh, education, which is one of our biggest, um, uh, I would say, uh, mission uh, points in our mission statement. So um, what we were thinking um, was doing some sort of um, either a uh, uh, professionally led discussion or um, showing of some sort of um, educational um, uh, video of some kind to be determined at the, at the library, per, per, um, perhaps also to involve the library staff in coming up with these kind of things. They've been great in conjunction with HRAC and coming up with programming and that kind of thing. Um, doing something like that, and um, after said program, we could um, do a uh, vigil walk to um, the town common, and we were thinking that it would really come across as something where we're all coming together and learning about how we can move forward and moving forward together. Um, so as far as events, we were really trying to put our heads together and figure out something, and that's our best idea so far. Um, but not a bad one. No. Sorry? Not a bad oh, one. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but we you know, other things that have already been touched upon, um, I, I think we definitely um, also think that um, revisiting a human rights resolution for our town would be important. Um, I think uh, obviously the Jewish community feels, um, has, has taken a lot of, um, you know, has taken on a lot of pain from what's happened recently, but there's a lot of different minorities in town, and they are that. They're minorities, and they're small, and it doesn't always feel um, like you're recognized and you're part of something, I think. So I think um, really being recognized, there's lots of towns that have been um, adopting these types of resolutions, and um, I think that it can go a long way to make um, 
uh, minority communities feel welcome in a town. And that's, you know, that's our, that's our mission is to really make Reading a more welcoming and um, uh, embracing of diversity um, uh, community. So, um, and I think uh, other than that, that's, um, our update, but if you had any, oh, and I'm really, thank you um, to uh, Acting Chief Clark for um, mentioning, I think that's our other thing, is we really wanted to improve on communication, um, even though it's wonderful to have um, uh, Acting Chief Clark as a HRAC member, um, but definitely <coughs> looking forward to continuously um, improving our communication with the police department, so that was great to hear, and um, we will continue our work on that. <laughs> Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Um, we are sort of approaching the time that we had set aside for this, but I, um, I don't want to end the discussion. If there's someone who hasn't spoken yet that <coughs> wants to address these, I want to kind of give you the, the opportunity to do so. Otherwise, um, I'd like to sum up what we've already heard um, and make sure we have it all right. And, well, everyone's taking notes. That's sort of funny. We all have the same notes, but <laughs> we're going to trust Caitlin. So, uh, Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Gary Phillips. Um, one of the first questions. Gary, yeah, you have to speak up. Into oh, I'm the mic. sorry. Yeah. Mic. Um, one of the first questions you went ahead and uh, uh, posed to advance fruitful conversation was what we all saw was the root of the problem. I think what, what leaves me uneasy with a lot of the previous speakers is this. I see in here what I believe to be a selective identification of the threats to our safety. I think it's limited, and I think it does us a disservice to fail to distinguish between what in many cases is a prank and what can be an ideologically motivated act. As one of the previous speakers said, these swastikas <coughs> did not rise to the level of being a hate crime. And it's probably because it was considered to be or relegated to the classification of being a prank. I object to that kind of behavior, but I, I also can distinguish between what some kid, a juvenile, in the high school grade group would do as a prank in someone who, again, is a national socialist, which we all know is uh, abbreviated with the term Nazi. When it comes to a solution, I'd like to ask the school department what they've done to educate the students better about national socialism, what it is, the same with communism, which is socialism, what are they doing to educate the students about what I as a Christian see as a greater threat in the form of radical Islam? Gary, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I'm, no gonna st I'm gonna stop you here, Gary. I think it, I think you're sort of straying off the topic. Uh, you know, what is the topic? W w one of the things that uh, you were here the whole time, and I know you heard what I heard. Um, and the fact that I'm Jewish doesn't matter, but the fact is, it, it doesn't necessarily matter whether it was a prank or who did it or a kid. It's the impact that it had on people who feel marginalized. And that's the, that's the import um, of what people were talking about. Um, whether it was you know, a 15-year-old kid who's a, who's, who, who, who took the oath to, to Nazism, or whether it was a prank, it doesn't matter. What matters is the fact is that people in this community have feel, are feeling marginalized and outside of the mainstream. And it's our role, not just the select board, but the role of every single person in this room, right, to make sure that that doesn't happen and to acknowledge it. Um, well, so let, when, so let me quote a previous speaker, if I may, where that person in so many words says, it doesn't necessarily happen, have to happen in, in the borders of our town because whenever it does happen, it, it impacts our town. And all I'm saying is this is, this is fruitless if you don't get at the root cause of the problem. 
okay? What is wrong with my proposal and suggestion to say educate the students as to what a swastika really represents? I'm opposed to that. And now here I am, hearing a response from one of our town fathers, okay, telling me that what I have as a suggestion is not even fruitful or productive. I mean, I really think you're missing the point here. If we're concerned about the safety of all citizens, I as a Christian is hypersensitive to the fact that I read about facts where in France now they have to have gods around the synagogues. Again, it doesn't have to happen within the borders of our community. It only has to impact our community. So if you want to go ahead and get at the root cause of the problem, I'm, a, I'm suggesting to all of you here present, the school department and the board of selectmen, educate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just to, just to remind the audience that um, <coughs> the, the schools are under the purview of the school committee, not the so select board. Okay. Um, anybody? <coughs> Janice? Any, uh, I'm just going to speak to one you do. Actually, but people on t uh, people oh. who are watching. People on TV. Um, I just want to share from a personal point of view as a parent of a Jewish child who's in the school system. The school system has been working very very um, much on education, and they've brought in Holocaust speakers, and they've in implemented more education about this issue. So maybe at first it was ignorance. Children didn't know how hurtful it was or what it, what it meant. And then we taught them, and then they said, Kill, gas the Jews. So this is not one or two pranks. This is a year, including 24 incidents whether they were swastikas that came 30 years ago, they were just found, which means that they're present in the community. So there is um, fear in a lot of people because, you know, if, if, if your kid is Jewish and people know they're Jewish and they walk out into the street, I mean, we see what's going on in this country of, you know, crazy things going on. So this is like, the beginning. It's not graffiti, it's not pranks, it's a message that we need to be on top of. Thank you. Thank you. Vanessa, you had something to say, and then really, we, we do, unless someone else in the audience no. has something, I think we need to kind of move on, but you wanted to say something. Thank you, Greg. Um, to Mr. Phillips' point, I think education is very important. Um, I think education, however, is not to be limited to our children. Um, as adults, we can also benefit from education. Um, one of the reasons I'm so happy about this particular meeting taking place and hearing from Red and ATRAC is all of the concrete ideas that can help inform our community where we can take actionable steps. Um, and so, I, from what I understand, the schools have done a great job of addressing the issue. Um, and now it's a matter of how we address it more broadly as a community. So yes, absolutely education, so let's extend that educational outreach to members of our community so we can empower them to help tackle these issues going forward. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Chair, with your permission, yes. um, I, I, I want to thank everybody who took the time to come out today and share the ideas. Clearly this is not just something that people just came to and you know, willy-nilly had free stuff against the wall, it's stuff that people have been working on for a really long time. <laughs> and we appreciate it greatly. Um, so let me just take two minutes to kind of sum up what I think I heard. Um, I know that we're all gonna, I might not have gotten it right because I'm trying to pay attention and right at the same time. So some of the concrete, and again, this is in no particular order, this is sort of maybe the order that people said it, not an order of importance, but one of the things that I heard was that um, perhaps a select board look at appointing a point person to be the one sort of member that kind of liaise, liaises um, with all the different um, groups and then reports back to the board. Um, we need a communication policy sort of to let everybody know what happens and then what happened, especially when something happens where we close the loop. We just can't report incidences and let it kind of hang out there. Um, 
an important thing that resonates for me um, is to acknowledge that the symbols matter, um, that that um, is an important piece and it's not just something that's scratched on a wall, that it, it goes deeper than that. Um, also, uh, um, sensitivity around scheduling meetings. Um, you know, um, um, Dr. Doxer was right, um, the Jewish calendar moves around and I, also, I get it wrong all the time and I'm not supposed to. So I can, can't imagine when, um, you know, we're trying to coordinate schedules of all different boards and commissions and meetings. So basically to have, uh, uh, you know, schedule meetings that make sure that we are sensitive to the holidays and, and do that in advance. Um, additional training. Sounded like the police department and the public schools were gonna go through um, ADL sponsor training and, and perhaps maybe we should look at that uh, potentially as a town and, and other town leaders. Um, one another suggestion was um, looking at the uh, human rights resolution again as an affirming policy statement. Um, also, um, protocols. If, uh, if a student finds something in the school, What's, where, where does she, he or she go to? What's the first, is it the teacher, is it the homeroom teacher, is it the building principal, is it the police? Just to establish some protocols where if it happens, it could get reported uh, through the proper channels. Um, what was talked about too, uh, it, uh, and it sounds like it's sort of somewhat been resolved, is to sort of close the loop potentially more between the police department and HRAC when these events happen so that, uh, when the incidents happen, so that everybody includes all the stakeholders um, and um, everybody knows about it. Um, we heard about potentially, and this is maybe outside of the realm of what town government can do, it could be maybe more question three about what can we do to support others, to have some type of an event, a vigil, a discussion, um, you know, I'm a child of the 70s, a teach-in, um, something like that, something that includes food, um, that sends a town-wide message um, uh, about this. And then also, I didn't quite get this, Gina, you might, we'll have to talk about this later, but sort of um, resurrecting a subcommittee or commission about you know, how to deal, I, I, I was, I was kind of listening and writing, so I might have missed that. So those were the specific points that I heard. Um, I think, um, obviously, um, we've, we've heard it, um, and, I, and, and, and again, I think it's a commitment of this board that we're gonna look to do some of the things, some of the stuff is, is low-hanging fruit, right, that, you know, things that we could do. Some of it's gonna take a little bit more thought, planning, um, you know, discussion, so, but we've heard it, and again, I just, personally, I wanna thank, you know, it's just one member of the board, wanna thank everybody for coming out and taking the time. Um, this is an important, um, this is an important topic. Nobody in town, regardless of, of where they were born or who they are or who they pray to, should feel marginalized in the town of Reading, and I think that we get that as a board, so, um, you know, this is just the beginning of, you know, the first of, you know, probably would be many, Discussions, but I at least I, I felt I got a lot out of it, right? I, I hope my colleagues did too. So, with that, Mr. Chair, I'm going to turn the gavel, the imaginary gavel, back over to you. Okay. Yes, yes. Might I suggest that we as a board, now that we have these steps, some of them that do in fact involve mm -hmm. us directly, um, that we agree to put this on a future agenda, if not um, October, because that seems a little soon, perhaps in early November, so that we can follow up and let the community know what progress we've made on these items. I, I agree, and, and I would loop in a track because mm -hmm. I know th there are advisory um, um, committee. Um, so, so we'll want to include them as well. I, I, before we move on, I do want to make it clear that this is not, we're not selectively protecting one group in town. Uh, the police force, I think, takes the safety of all citizens very seriously. And if there was some other um, vandalism or acts of hate towards some other group in Reading, that the police, the select board, the schools uh, would would take action. So it's not just it's not just the swat. It wouldn't. It's not just swastikas. We're not just um, selectively protecting one group. That that needs to be said. <coughs> All right. Um, next up on the agenda. Thank you, and thank you, thank you so much for coming and speaking. Yeah. 
The yep. only people remaining in the room are paid to be here, let me point out. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about Thank that. Thanks, Bob. Big bucks. Thanks, Big bucks. thanks a lot, Bob, for that <laughs> reminder. Time. All right. All right, let's wrap this up. Okay. I have to sign. What was that we're signing, by the way? That was the warrant. It's a warrant. So yeah. that we can't well, have tell me about your <laughs> stigma. Right. Um, you may be very unhappy. Okay. Um, so, town manager's goals. Um, I think that uh, I try, I, I put something together. I don't know if it's, uh, if it'll help the discussion or not, but it, it was a three, three page document. I admit, it wasn't my idea, I think it was maybe Bill Brown's or somebody's, but you know, the selectmen's, uh, the selectmen's, the town manager's duties are listed in section 5.2 of the charter and um, if you if you just go down the list, he does them quite well every year, year after year, um, and so I, I just thought that might be a starting starting point uh, for us to have frame of reference, and that most of these things that most of the prioritized projects that that Bob had had you had your. Um, your other managers and leaders um, prioritize, they all fall under, um, f except for maybe one, I wasn't really sure. They all fell under, fell under one of those duties. Um, you do have some powers as well, but, but uh, uh, that's, that's not what we're discussing here. Um, so just to start, us off, start the discussion off, I thought um, we could have prioritized projects that Bob is doing in town hall um, th that fall under um, his duties in the in the charter. They actually go sort of go above and beyond, um, and then then board goals for Bob that came out of our evaluations. Um, and you've all, have you all had a chance to digest all of this? Yeah. So I guess first, what do you think of the approach? Um, you know, he's got a set of prioritized goals for him and his staff. Did you uh, sit down with the town manager and develop this with him? No, I did this, uh, I think. You did this Thursday like over the weekend. I did this over, or the weekend, yeah. It was just, it's all, it's all, everything's out there already. I just organized it in a certain way. Well, it seems, seems to me someone should have sat down with him and gone over this before it came to us. Okay. Uh, to see if he had any concerns, comments, suggested changes. Yeah. I mean, in years past, that's certainly how. Okay. It was done. Th thank you for that, Dan. And and uh, I hope the town manager will, and he, you know, be part of this discussion. You hope. You, you Ask him. Sure he can hear is? you. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, will you be part of this discussion? I'd be pleased. Awesome. Okay. Um, so thoughts. Well, I, I have a question. So, so Bob. I, just so, I think I understand the process, but I want to make sure everyone else understands the process. So, when you put out, it looks like there was like eight, about 20 some odd, 18, 19, 20. Um, that didn't come out of sort of out of the hat. It was you sitting down with your department heads and sort of laying out kind of strategically, you know, sort of operationally kind of, okay, you know, we have to get tax classification done. We have to get, you know, um, some of the day-to-day the -day things, but some of the things that you had sort of put down were more sort of long-term, forward-thinking policy strategies. And so I'm assuming you sat down with all of them and maybe, you know, on a day staff or a treat or whatever and kind of came up with these and asked them their opinions about what they needed in it, and that's how you came up with this list. So, you know, the way I guess I would look at it is that um, I wouldn't necessarily prioritize these, and that's, that's what the town manager 
um, and the department heads kind of say that we need to do, we need to do we need to we need to get accomplished. Now, obviously, there are things that maybe you know we've talked about it that kind of coincide with our own uh, sort of select board goals. Yeah. But I, I don't think that there is a huge need in sort of putting okay, this is one. I know you rank them, but this is one. This is 19. That that 19 doesn't matter, right? That it matters. So um, I, I guess I when I look at the charter. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of lists some of the, the duties that the town manager is responsible for, but also um, operationally, you know, we've, you know, and contractually, you know, this, this board has given the town manager sort of the, the leeway to, you know, kind of do the day-to-day -day business. So sort of pegging a specific priority to something in the charter, I'm not, I'm not sure that's helpful, right? Because we, we, we sort of empowered Bob, you know, as, as you know, if this if he were if this were business and government is not business, mm. you know, it would be you know a COO or CEO level of you know kind of coming to us with okay, this is what I need, this is what we need to do, and then obviously it's not a you know, rubber stamp. We discuss. Yeah, it's not a carte blanche. You might say, well, you know what? Maybe that's next year that we really want to. I think we, we should, and that's where the discussion comes. I, 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 otherwise, I think we're just getting in the weeds, and and I'm not sure how helpful that really is. Uh, um, let, me, let me explain to you what I did this year and what we've done in past years, which is similar. Um, May is usually the time for non-union and union performance evaluations. Mm -hmm. So May is the time when we're generally going over things like long-term objectives, and each employee gets some type of <coughs> list of objectives. Uh, normally the maximum is five, sometimes it's seven. Um, so as when I review the department heads, for instance, I have a list. So from those discussions, which did not just happen in one day, but it happened for several months before, mm -hmm. we come up with a list and then this is from their reviews. So this is specifically um, things that you might care about, I should say, from their reviews. There's some things you would absolutely never even consider. Yeah. Um, and in the past, we've grouped those by subject matter. Sometimes you can do that. Sometimes it's, it's a little miscellaneous. And the only reason I asked them, and this, this was given to you, I don't know, I'm going to say June. It could have been May, but it was probably June, just as a list of 20 mm -hmm. segregated yeah. by topic. Yeah. Um, Andy then asked me to have them ranked. So I, I chose to ask each department head to rank them just like you ranked your goals. I think it was one through 20. Yeah. And I just did a simple numerical average and this is what eight department heads plus myself as a ninth vote did. Yeah. Is that, is that what's on 20, page 23? So that's what's behind you now. Um, yeah. And that's the right. list I showed you in yeah. the past. Yeah. Again, this is as of June, July, you know, as of July in, yeah. 1st. In the main packet though, it has a score. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't include the scores. I just yeah, I, I'm assuming that. this is the same order. It's I know the, same the first one. Yeah, it all. should be, yeah. And that's that's just, again, the votes of 19. <laughs> yeah. So the lower the score, the more important or the less important? Number one was the most important, so that's yeah. the average. So if oh, you got a one, yeah, get it, get it, everyone get it. said it was a one. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Um, let me find that. That was so page four of the main packet. So, Barry, I have, I have a slightly different perspective on this, and, and that was that there was... Um, um, unanimous agreement that nobody liked the evaluation form for yes. this year. Yeah. So I, I looked at this um, spreadsheet that Andy had put together and I thought, well, this is an interesting way of identifying the priorities that Bob as town manager has put forward and the ranking that he and his department heads view them. Um, and there's probably not much disagreement from the board. Um, but it ties it into his responsibilities as laid out in the charter, which I think could be another way to look at the evaluation process. Um, not to necessarily say we're gonna get in the weeds and you know, go into any specific detail on some of these. They're clearly under his purview and, and under his control. Um, but simply as another way to look at his responsibilities and how they tie into it. Um, so I, I liked this. Um, I, I, as far as steps to be taken, I, unless we want to change something yeah, significantly, I don't know. They just copied that from the the uh, the other page, page three. Oh, okay. So that uh, that's not. A, you which know. table are you speaking to? The uh, it is. Can I see yours? Because I. Is this, this is what you're talking about. Uh, the previous one. This one. Is that the? 
this one. Oh, okay. That's the one that Which Bob put together. Yeah. Yes. yes. Based the, on the scores. Yes. yes. And then yeah, the only thing added yeah. is the, the section fine. under the charter mm -hmm. that they fall under. Yeah. So there's a, and interestingly on that list, mm -hmm. three of our five goals are present. So in other words, what essentially what you got from your department heads, Bob, and yourself, three of those emerged immediately that were tied directly to the ones that we agreed on as in our top five. Yeah. So I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I just will comment though. Did you look at this before you agreed to take this job? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is 5.2 um, of the charter? Because I'm not sure I would have ever agreed. If those are the only things that's I had a to do, it would be an easy job. Yeah, well, it's I a think frightening look list. at the first sentence in the real charter and see what it says. Yeah, I mean, the A, the a just A in and of no, itself. No, 4A. Read that. Oh, okay. I'll be the administrator of chief administrative officer of the town. That alone is mm -hmm. other duties as assigned. Right, <laughs> right, right. By the way, we're going to start listing a lot of things. Yeah. But, but it's, not, it's, not, it's not a, um, uh, it's a not comprehensive exclusive. list. It's not an exclusive Correct. list. No, yeah, so. no and, and just to point out, I, I know you know this, but just to say it out loud, um, a town manager is very different than a town administrator, and town managers are very different one to the next. Our charter is what's called a strong town manager, mm -hmm. lucky me. Um, <laughs> documents and policy documents that need to spell out differences and distinctions are much more important when you have different sources of power or authority. Yeah. So Stoneham, as an example, just because they're nearby as a town administrator with a lot of elected boards that have authority yep. and power. Like we used to So be. they have to have documents that really spell that out. Um, you know, we're in a situation where the documents, you know, they're historic, those debt list, it's 26 <laughs> years old. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when the recent Charter Review Committee looked at it, they didn't change anything to my recollection. They just said, whatever. <laughs> yeah. They just could have gotten rid of all that and just left A. They really could have. Yeah. But it, uh, but, but but it is. I'm glad they didn't. But the reason I brought it up, Bob, and everybody, is because it is an impressive list. And um, I, I wanted to acknowledge it in some way and say that these things are done every year. Um, by the town manager. If you guys think it's a distraction, we can leave it out. Um, I, I was only teasing about the fact that this it's a it's a massive job. It is massive. Yeah. Um, and you know, I do really think that uh, Dan hit on something that we need to do. I understand that. I really do understand that what you're starting to do here, Andy, was grab in a priority basis the goals that. Bob and his managers put forth and right. then translate those into something that's a little more usable. And I, and I find this form that you put together infinitely more usable than the last one that we just used, to, you know. So I, then I think where it becomes really imperative, kind of tied to something Dan said a little earlier, um, I think it's, you know, I think you should sit with Bob or you and Barry should sit with Bob as the chair and the vice chair and hear from him relative to these things mm -hmm. instead of, so I, when the CEO, when I was on the board of the company that I was involved in, and the yeah. CEO would come to us um, with goals and objectives and what the CEO wanted to accomplish and the executive <coughs> committee went back and forth with them and said, okay, how are you going to get there? You got a plan for this, and we never laid out the plan for the CEO. Um, I mean, we actually fired a CEO because you know he laid out his own plan and didn't follow it. Uh, okay, but yeah. the point is, I think it really has to be a diet. I like the form. I, I, yeah. I, I think it needs more work. That's yeah, I, I think it needs yeah. a, it needs a dialogue with you and Bob. But is this an evalu I'm sorry. Is this an evaluation form or is this a goal setting form? Uh, well, we're I supposed mean, to set yeah. his goals. Yeah, right. What that I think happens is it becomes both. Yeah. Right. Once you once you have a form that works on the goals, right. and then there's an agreement as to the as to the game plan, then later. You know, if you remember, Barry, a few years back, part of that process we were using in, in the evaluation. In other words, we looked at blocks of goals that Bob put out and said, how do you do? Right. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and that form right. actually, it was his goal setting <coughs> form, but it later right. turned into a form that was but very even, useful. Even last year, I think, Bob, you must have, we must have done this at least three, maybe four times, is that periodically. Quarterly. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe once four times where you go back and you would have those and you just sort of, and you gave a sort of percentage yeah. of completion Progress. and, yep. you know, some things got done, some things weren't going to get done, but there was a reason why or, you know, obviously yeah. last year the big thing was just all finances were mostly. And, and just to add this in, um, I don't know that it changed the work we do, but a couple chairs ago asked for less writing. So I used to do more of a written update. Yeah. And it was like, we don't need you to spend your time writing all that stuff, just talk. Yeah. But I'll do whatever is most comfortable for you to understand and the community to understand. The reason that goal setting is important um, is in theory, that's how you're supposed to evaluate me. We know in practice that's only a part of it. Yeah. But I need to know if there's something not on this list that you think is important and you didn't tell me, how am yeah. I gonna do it? Right. And if you think something's on this list that's not important at all and we're gonna spend time doing it and you don't want it, you gotta right. tell me. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, the list is not meant to be exhaustive. It's things that I think the board might have an opinion on. As opposed to what I'll call real operational stuff, which is going to happen anyways. And right. Some of these are operational, but things like senior tax relief and the uh, tax classification process for at least this one more year will be different. It's because there's a new process, there's new board members, um, it's going to take front and center. I think after this year and we digest what you'll learn from Victor about senior tax relief, it goes back to being pushed in the back drawer. You don't need right. to worry about yeah. it as a goal. Yeah. Can I suggest, so we have um, two sheets here that I think are, are um, particularly interesting. One is page three, which is technically page 23 of this PDF, right. um, which is the prioritized projects that Bob has put together. So that's part one. If we have any changes, if we, if we think this list needs to be changed um, or reprioritized in some way, I, I personally <coughs> don't have much to comment on there. Um, right. Then I, I would suggest we tackle that. And then the page that follows, which is page 24 of the PDF, um, the potential 19 goals, if we can go over those and determine, you know, are we in agreement that these are things yeah. um, that we want to add? Are you talking the second packet or the first packet? The second, second packet. It's the packet behind you also. Packet two, yeah, uh, this one. page 24 of the PDF right here. There. Yep. I, I think we should be focused, I, I agree with that, I think we should be focused on the column that says goals from select board evaluations. The, uh, you know, the idea of, implement, of, of proscribing implementation steps mm -hmm. to the CEO, I think yeah. that's kind of his job to tell us. Sure. As he's reporting, this is what, I'm working on this goal, here's the way I'm doing it. Yeah. And so you, you may have been talking about me, Bob, a couple of chairmen back when I said, let's talk about oh, it. Oh, I wonder. Um, <laughs> I didn't remember. Um, Could have been. Because I do think that, you know, so you've got three columns, you got, you know, three or four columns there. Yeah. Um, the second column, in my opinion, is really important. That you get some agreement, you know. I, I like the form. Mm -hmm. um, at some later time, the steps. I, I mean, I don't think it's up to us to proscribe the steps. I only did that because uh, the form. You know, I'm a state employee. Give me a form. I'll fill gotta it out. Got to fill it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got to fill it out. So there were th there were sections in there where you're supposed to say steps to be taken, um, and so I took a stab. Yeah. Um, as far as, I just want to make a comment on the process, Bob. Uh, you know, uh, and, and Dan, I hear you running this by Bob for his input um, on that approach, but I was reluctant to have it be me or just Barry, uh, or me and Barry, uh, go in and hammer things out with look, Bob. Look, that's the way the world works, Andy. You, you can't have five people hammering things out. It's perfectly fine to come up with a draft with two people and Bob. Yeah. Bring it back here. The board is free to change it, free yeah. to alter it, add to it, subtract from it. It's not, you're not going behind the curve. Okay, no, 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 I, that, that I, I makes sense. I think you have a reluctance to do that. Uh, no, I, I see your, to work. I see, yeah. I see your point. Yeah. That, that's a fair point. So. Um, if the board would like, um, and Barry is willing, and Bob is willing, yes. I just want to ask a question. Um, is there a difference between the prioritized projects and the potential goals? Are they sort of all part of the same thing, or are they different? Yeah, that's what I was kind of. It's like there's some overlap that's clear. Uh, uh, you know, retention. Yeah, I mean. That's, that's in both cases. <coughs> but I'm just trying to understand the flavor of the second part. I, I, Aren't these competency measures in the second column? They, they seem 
from my they memory. They were from the, they the were, review. They were, the reviews had these 15 the, companies. Yes, yeah, and you, we rated them. Yeah, and yeah. What you did was to take the comments, the detailed comments pertaining to each area. I, I tried to find yeah. them, yeah. So uh, some of those will require more discussion, yes. both with the board and Bob, because Absolutely. I'll give you an example. The managing others, uh, I won't read the verbiage, but it implies there's a problem. Mm -hmm. We need to get on agreement that that's a problem and that's the solution. Right. Or, or not. Right. Right. Yes, I agree. I, that's how actually I read this as far as potential goal. So, Bob, to answer yeah. your question from my perspective, the prioritized projects versus the potential goals are different. There might be some overlap, for example, yeah. on retention, um, which has been generally agreed upon. Um, and so I think the goals merits discussion as a board in are we in agreement that these are what some areas that we want the town manager to focus on as accomplishments for the coming year. Um, and then we can ham he can hammer out the details, yeah. provide updates as yeah. appropriate. Um, so that that was my take on that on the goal section. Yeah, I mean Yes, Bob. Um, just if it hasn't been clear, I, I just want to make sure it's clear. The twenty projects you know derived by yeah. staff and myself. We're not the final word. They're not meant to be the final word. They're meant to be a draft for you to look at. Yeah. yeah. So I personally see no difference in the two sets of things. You're kind of being more hands off in the first thing. <coughs> oh, you know, you guys did that. Mm -hmm. I'm opening the door and welcoming comments. If again, if you think something's valuable or not valuable, your second part is good because it's things not on that list in, in many cases. Yeah. That's okay. But I, I, I'll, you know, take in your advice on the first list by, by all means if you say that something that's just not a high priority for the next whatever nine or ten months yeah you know you feel free to tell me <laughs> yeah um, I, I will approach all these issues the same whether they're listed in one table or another and come up with a form that gives you an ability to judge yeah I, I, the, the only reason there are two different parts is because one was generated two different uh, sources uh, two different sources yeah. I also see it as, you know, when, when we look at the prioritized list of projects, you know, it, this this goes about the conversations you and I have where these are, they're, they're goals, but they're also part of your broader responsibilities. And I, I think the board is in general agreement that we don't want to micromanage how you do these. Um, you right. have a, the best understanding of the the order in which they need to be handled and, and which ones are most pressing. So I don't, I, I can't speak for the rest of the board, but I don't really have any commentary on this. I okay. find it fine as yeah. is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else would like to comment or. In terms of the previous table, that one. That one, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is prioritized. Yeah. Um, I, I <coughs> Uh, well, the only thing is that, is that I would hope that, like last year and the year before, years before, we would get sort of periodic updates on how we're doing on these things. Yeah. Um, did the first one. Huh? We did the first one. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 19. Check, check, yeah, okay. check, check that out. I like, the, I like how you prioritize <coughs> them because um, you don't need to, I, I, I don't feel that Bob, he, he achieves these in the order which he feels are important, and as long as we agree, that's fine. But so he achieves the first eight and doesn't get the last eight or something like that. Um, that, that doesn't, that's neither here nor there for me. Yeah. Um, because some things are gonna take longer than expected or not. So that's why I like the priority. Um, I don't know. Dan. Oh. Uh, Bob, can you define comprehensive emergency plan? What, what is that about? Um, that's something that the town needs to update on a periodic basis. It's almost like a master plan for emergencies, I guess I'll say. In the Different from building security. Yeah. So Fire that'd be like security. the active shooter drills and is there there Merrimack there Valley gas yes, explosion. There? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, a new yeah. chapter. Yeah. <laughs> There's lots of pieces of it you'd be familiar with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a large comprehensive gotcha. document. Yeah. Okay. So the red the book. Piece the other piece I would add is, you know, I th given the time of year that we're in, I think this list makes sense. I also want to make sure that, you know, the town manager feels he has enough flexibility to adjust as needed, depending on 
how things arise, which is another reason why I don't want to get sort of too much further into this one. Yeah, okay. and there are things on this list that he's going to wind up doing this year that we don't know about yet. Right. So, you know, I, I, I think So, for the potential uh, 19 goals, I think this is, and you said all of this was pulled from the evaluations, right? I, I, you know, again, I tried to yeah. read through them and be as, but this is going to require obviously more discussion yeah. because right. We may not all be in agreement. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, see we, things we, on here not, that I don't. We're not in agreement. We're not in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so given yeah. given that it's ten fifteen, yeah. um, do we? I, I don't know what's on the agenda for next week off the top of my head, but is this something that we would like to take up this specific portion of his goal setting for our next meeting? A couple of meetings from now looks pretty light. Yeah, yeah, next one might be. Busy. Yeah. Um, is there anything I can do to help the board figure this out between meetings? Like you on your yes. goals, you voted on. Is yes. there any other mechanism you can think of? I, I, I mean, as Dan suggested, um, would it be helpful if Barry and I sat down with you? It would, but I discuss. think it's also now that now that this is being discussed, I really would like to hear from all of you. Yes, yeah, so, so yeah. yeah, okay. Can I suggest, Bob? You'll remember a form that you used to visit us regarding. And it was categorized, yeah. not necessarily in a dissimilar way from this form that Andy right. has built. And so inside of one box, there was a bundle of things yep. that were related to each other. Right. And, and there was probably, in my mind, there was, as, I, as my recollection is, I want to say there was six or seven boxes, which to me is a lot more manageable than a list of yeah. 19, 20, 21. And, and frankly, I think you know the approach that you're using here, Andy, is moves in that direction. Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember that, and I, but I do know oh, you, yeah. you got it someplace. That was the format I started with in May. And again, the only reason we prioritize is Andy said, "Can you please give me a prioritized list in case we want to draw a line somewhere?" And you know, it makes no difference to me. I, I know the old format. I can put that <coughs> together quickly. I think it's easy to to hit priorities within that yeah. within that box, and I think. That form could lend itself to a, you're asking for Joint input evaluation. from five people, right. and it's tough okay. when we're, we're trying to make up a form and work with your priorities. And I mean, I think what Andy's tried to do here is notable, and I right. think it's a step in the right direction. I think we're reinventing a little bit something that might be there. And if we move this out, um, you know, next, where are we meeting next well, week? And I, I think that's say, pretty full, as I recall. In it is. Town hall. Let me produce what I think you're wanting, and I might actually ask you just to make sure. Yeah. And then you at least have that for next week as a starting point, yeah. and then you can plan your next step. <coughs> Very good. And everybody else might look at it and go, what was Halsey thinking? This is stupid, mm -hmm. which is okay. I mean, honestly, it just, but I do think it might simplify this process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, are you, are you, so are you suggesting, John, that these, some of these be grouped? By, by category. I think if, if Bob goes back to the format that we used and... Right, look at it. I mean, that's without the detail, but yes. this is groups. So there's finance up top. There was four right. things yeah. up to finance. Yeah, that's how we did it. Yeah. Yeah. And so now what happens is he takes these, these I'm not saying throw these goals out because yeah. they're, they're real. Right. And they're prioritized. Yeah. I'm just saying insert them into a format like this. Yeah, and then in a prior iteration, each of these had a long explanation or a short explanation Correct. In, in a box. I think that's what you're thinking of. Yes. Okay, I And understand. you know, when all was said and done, right. by using that through the course of a year, having that available when it's time to do your review, right. Now I feel like I'm actually giving you some good feedback because I, I got some. Like that's look, what I use on a specific right. point. Correct. Right. Yes. I mean that's what I actually when I wrote your review it mm -hmm. didn't it didn't have I mean the form didn't exist to match that I went back yep. to that and then I just started writing right because it's like okay well we handled these things so I think we're in the same direction. Very cheated in the last. Yeah, I, I just didn't follow the form. No, I just, I just wrote. I yeah. think we're pointed right. in the right direction yeah, to Vanessa's point. Let's, yeah. let's get it back on the calendar when we're fresh. Okay. And yeah. we've got a little feedback from tonight. I, that's what I think anyway. I, I agree. I agree. Um, so to, just to be clear, Bob, can, can you put 
this in the format yeah. and that format. And then, not to jump ahead too far, but when we have a review process, there can just be a box under each group where we can comment on, okay. you know, yes, he did this well, and the, you know, you know, or not, or whatever. Feedback. Yeah, feedback. <coughs> feedback on those specific issues. Much better than the form I think we had this year. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Um, is there actually a DPU letter? To there it is. And it should oh. have been passed out. Oh, sorry. We oh, don't have this, right? It's slacking. <laughs> no. Is that the packet? Did. No. no. Can you make no. it a little bigger? It's, it's short. Yeah. That's it. On a hard oh, copy? Oh, cool. Yeah. That would be helpful. Hard copies are crazy. You're not slacking. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself that uh, the events in Merrimack Valley may hasten the settlement here. Yeah, <laughs> these guys are out of work. Uh, actually, you know what though? What do you want to be? Uh, actually, what job you want to be in? You know, right? Columbia Gas will probably hire them, and you know, yeah. now, now I think those yeah. guys were, were lining up over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, wait a minute, we'll, we'll settle. Yeah, yeah, and, they, yeah. and then they might can't get these guys to come might back. Might Don't go be, away. Might make DPU's job a little tougher. Yes, this is fine. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Vanessa. Any other comments? Well, I think this is good. I'll move to Actually, you can make the motion. I can right? make the motion. Right. We can discuss. <laughs> move to uh, uh, authorize the chair or the secretary to send the letter to the Department of Public Utilities as amended. Second. Should it be? Um, discussion. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen this done <coughs> both ways, but Merrimack, does it have a K at the end? I was hoping someone would check. Where are you? Oh. On the and second the paragraph, paragraph next to last. Merrimack. I've seen it spelled both ways. I yeah. I, it does have a K. CK? It does? Frick. I'm pretty sure it does. I'm not sure. Well, I'll call and say that Max now. And I'm is without a K. It's too late. Yes, yeah, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. Merrimack Mass is without a K, but the I don't know. The river is the key. Um, well, uh, let's not worry. <laughs> let's, it, it, you know, no, it we'll 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 use that as an exercise for other people. Google it? Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, so one of the things I didn't know is uh, when we have letters like this, I assume we each, do we each need to write it, or can the chair sign on our behalf? Chair can sign. Yeah. Or I can okay. sign on your behalf. Well, you yes. authorized it by a vote of the board. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Merrimack with a K, it looks like. At least that's how the press is reporting. Okay. So yeah. C K. Okay. Whoever has a K. Pretty sure. CK. Merrimack College has a K. Yep. Okay. Merrimack, New Hampshire's with a C. Well, that, what do you think? Well, that's New Hampshire. Uh -huh. New Hampshire. <laughs> there you have it. I am All a right. New Hampshire resident. Uh, so, <laughs> any other any? discussion or edits on this? Yeah. Nope. All in favor? <coughs> Two <coughs> Five zero. <coughs> Thank you, Vanessa. Yep. Thanks. We, um, were there minutes in the packet? Nope. No. no. I'm sorry. No, it's just part of that. Select board goals progress report. Isn't that what, didn't we just do that? No, no, I saw no these are our goals. private goals. Now, Dan and I are working, are, you know, are, try, are trying to divvy up or decide how we're going to approach section two, and then we'll get a sub. Oh, those goals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the community. Policy. Stuff. Right. Do you want to talk about the chair. process reviewing these, or? Yeah. What do you want to talk about tonight? Um, well, I was w wondering if there was any updates. I, I have a small one. Oh, yeah. John, yes. you do. John. Are you first? Did uh, somebody raise their hand in front of me? I wanted to Please suggest go we do a quarterly update, much oh. like Bob is going to do. Okay. So okay. We're not quite through a quarter yet. This yes. is a process yep. um, update, not a <coughs> progress update. Okay. Um, when we talked last time, okay. our second goal was broadly labeled capital yeah. projects. Yeah. Yeah. And it also had five names interested in working on it. Yes. Um, and so what I, if you remember, one of the things I said was let me tackle this, mm -hmm. and, and I have. Mm -hmm. I've spent a lot of time with Bob doing some research on what capital projects really mean over the course of the next year, yeah, yeah. And, and, and what they look like. And so I, I took certain liberties. Now, one of the things we also agreed on, um, well, we said rather loosely, we didn't yeah. really appoint a subcommittee. 
but Vanessa offered to give me a hand with this, so I've asked her feedback on some of this research work and cool. how it's been put together. And, and so um, to that end, it's in your packet. Let me just give you an executive summary. Packet two? Yeah, um, packet two. There are five Conference. areas yep. in, in what are broadly called capital <coughs> projects. Yep. Um, the school and town building security being one of those. That, that appears on our goals in, in, under capital projects and it appears on Bob's. Yep. Um, elementary school um, space study is another capital item. Um, a senior center, and I've, in, in, for purposes of this discussion, I'm kind of tying that together as a community center rather than a single use. Mm -hmm. um, and then in recreation and athletic repairs and needs, there is capital. Um, and lastly, the Department of Public Works, Public Works Facility and what would be required, where do we go, what do we do, how's our progress? And so those five areas actually happen coincidentally that there are five and there are five of us. And what I'm gonna suggest to you, um, and, I, and, I've, and I've, as I said, in, Although we're not a, an official subcommittee, I've, I've asked, for, I've bounced the ideas you know, around with Vanessa as well. It strikes me that we can leverage this goal into something really powerful. Each one of us could take an assignment under capital projects. And so, again, I'm gonna say coincidentally, but I don't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. These five areas all are represented by five of us separately. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, for example, um, school and town building security is under public safety. Yep. And I, I'm suggesting that maybe that um, these are suggestions. Yes. That Vanessa think about uh, being the point person there. Mm -hmm. um, the elementary school space study, which sounds like oh, it's a study. It sounds like it's soft, not really <laughs> capital, but it really is fundamental to you know capital projects um, and. Andy, since you're the, you know, since you are one of two, but the current chair who always sits assigned with schools, I thought yep. that would be a great spot for you to think about mm -hmm. taking on. Uh, the community slash senior center. Again, several areas that I that I liaison to match up there, so it strikes me that that would be the place that, that I would fit. Um, recreational, athletic repairs and needs. Um, Dan has been fairly engaged, as well as a lot of these have two liaisons, but yeah. Dan has been engaged with recreation um, recently, and uh, as well as Vanessa, but I'm suggesting that Dan um, be the spearhead around item four. Mm. And the Department of Public Works doesn't sound like it's economic development, but it is focused yeah, around yeah, economic yeah. development. And it struck me, Barry, that that would be a great place for you to be putting your energy. So I want to stick me as a second. So I have, um, there's a hard copy here yep. uh, for each of you, okay. and there is a okay. copy in your packet as well. And, um, and, and so number one, I'm suggesting that maybe Vanessa Spearhead and that Andy Spearhead number two. Mm -hmm. um, I would have number three, uh, Dan would have number four, and Barry number five. And the idea here is now, you. <laughs> you look at our goals. We have five goals that we've prioritized. Mm -hmm. This was our number two goal. And by, by assigning it out this way, Bob did all this work. You know, I, of course I torture him as I always do, and he always comes up with, you know, he creates a great conversation and then he is able to condense it. So you've got two or three paragraphs about each of these. And um, it puts us on a, on a great footing, I think, to really leverage these goals so that capital projects is not amorphous. It's not like, oh yeah, well, what's that? We're gonna build something? Mm -hmm. um, it really kind of takes shape. So that's kind of the update. I told you I would work on it. If this looks good to you, we'll do it. If it doesn't, you can think about it and we'll adjust it. But I promised you some output and there you have it. Oh, I didn't expect you were going to give us more work. <laughs> I guess as a sort of as a, um, yeah, sort of a follow-up to that, I guess we're getting into the budget season, and a lot of these capital things right. are going to be coming up through the financial. Some of it will be immediate in the financial forum. Some of yeah. it will be sort of a part of the capital plan. 
um, you know, which obviously we're all going to be involved in all of that. Some of it's going to be debt excluded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot. Yeah. Where, you know, Vanessa and I chatted briefly about this, and that was a piece of feedback. There's more here than what meets the eye. I mean, this yeah. really yeah. starts to open a great discussion yeah. about moving the town forward. Yeah, in a and lot it's of also too. It's, it's not only a lot of the, these different things are going to have different timelines. Uh, yes. And you know, we need to sort of figure out kind of. Uh, how all this gets communicated to the public. Because, you know, if there's gonna be a debt exclusion for <coughs> one or two of these things, we have to figure out the when, and we have to <coughs> we have to lay it out comprehensively because yep. the last thing in the world I think people are gonna to wanna, to, uh, at least this is the feedback I got, one of the main feedbacks I got from when we did the survey back a year, oh, over a year ago now, yeah. um, is that um, I don't mind spending money but tell me everything I need to know up front so I can make the decision. Yep. So. Yeah. The, you know, some of these things may progress faster than other pieces, yeah. um, but I think that we need to sort of lay it out comprehensively as a plan. And I, I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I might be stealing what you're th doing, but is that, for the financial form, is that not only the not only the individual bullets, but sort of the timeline of when it all occurs? I plan to talk to the finance committee about this memo briefly mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Uh, it's a little more, and it's really meant to be preparation for yeah, and the DPW uh, issue needs to be integrated with the phased approach we take toward developing that area. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. The revenue stream we're getting from. Some of these are more, and some of those are less complex in terms of. That's very complex. Right. So, so, Bob, I see, you know, I, I like this uh, approach, and, and if the other board I members do. Some things in here that give you tangible things, like I think this should go into the November capital plan. Yeah. We voted on in April, and this is the fact currently. It's either in or it's not in the capital plan. Right. I thought those are the immediate term action steps you'd need to see. But I, my I, and, and we and, and as John pointed out, we're liaisons to these groups, so it makes it that much easier. But um, the the only thing that I would ask is that we keep Bob in the loop all the time. Okay. Because absolutely. Oh, yeah. um, goes out saying, um, you know. Um, yeah, and just to point out, three of these five have a lot to do with the schools. Right. Yeah. I think it's one, two, and four. Yeah. yeah. In fact, if I read this correctly, there, there's not much I can do until the schools move forward first on, on that. that. Yeah. Okay. But that could be a project. That could be multi-projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, really. Yeah. This is this approach will <laughs> open a huge dialogue and a lot, yeah. kind of a, a coordinated yep. and integrated dialogue, which I think you know, Bob can uh, obviously. This is good fuel for the for the FinCom and. Yeah, and we just need to condense this into a one-page picture. Right. Right. Focus the timeline. I think when you guys get a chance to read the paragraphs um, around each one of your names yeah. that I've suggested, it you know Bob has done a great job of doing some financial research there. Yep. Some of those projects, for example, have already been voted by town meeting and they're yeah. funded, you know, they're partially funded or, you know, majority funded. So there's, there's, uh, there's a lot going on in just these two pages, to be honest with you. And um, who is it, who, John? If I could, sorry to interrupt, but who is assigned? to selling uh, the uh, Oak, Oak Street property. We haven't, I don't, I'm sorry. We, have not, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't really have created, the, like you, you talk, Vanessa and I agreed to talk about this, yeah. these capital yeah. projects together. We never really formed a separate subcommittee for that. Yeah. Um, okay. But we, you know, Oakland Road obviously is a player in the middle of yeah, that, this well, that's, project. That's what I'm pointing out. You know. So like, I, I, I know, who I who I'm teaming up with, Dan on on the on on the policy and right. Barry on the um, <coughs> uh, housing trust. Um, neither of them factor into these that much, but s s some some of you, who's doing the the sale? Did we ever figure that I, out? What I would be happy to volunteer to right. work on that with somebody else. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what you. I think what you wanted to do is create small two-person subcommittees. Subcommittees, yes. Yeah. Um, I yeah. mean, to me, the Oakland Road um, goal mm -hmm. is one that connects so closely to this, to the capital. Yeah. We all have a capital, you know, involvement here yeah. based on the model I showed you. Yeah. Um, 
I, you know, again, I'm going to raise my hand around the Oakland Road. I'm very interested in what that really means. Yeah. Is it a cash asset? Mm -hmm. Is it a property asset? Yeah. Um, I mean, what do we do with it? How does it fit Is into it a everything solution else? solution to another one of these yeah. five? <laughs> I think if, if I may, so first, John, I want to thank you for taking the lead on this and breaking it down. So we had a nice conversation um, up about these. Um, this isn't meant to capture correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't meant to capture all of the capital projects that are necessary. These are, the, I think, the ones that are oh, the biggest and require collaboration with other boards and committees um, and with other individuals. So I think as we go through this exercise of each of us diving into these, if everyone's amenable to their yeah. um, suggested assignment, then Oakland Road sort of be sitting in the back of our mind as far as can that property mm -hmm. be utilized um, in moving any of these efforts forward. I, that's, I mean, that's a perfect description. So I, 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 I just like to formalize really quickly. I, I thought we did this at the last meeting, but I didn't write it down. And I, I looked at the movie clip, and I noticed, or the movie clip, the YouTube clip, and I noticed that, that when I asked who would be willing to take on the capital projects, it, it, Vanessa said you were, she'd be interested in John. John, you said you were interested in all of them, but, but you, you specifically said you'd work on this, and, and yep. I think that's great. So, so you two are doing that. Uh, um, Barry, what are the two things you're doing? Well, I was going to, I guess, I think they, 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 they do. They go hand in hand. The DPW, I think right? they Isn't do. That what we just right, I've got athletics. Yeah. Athletic fields. Yeah. Right. It was your five select board goals. I think you agreed to last time. I don't remember. There were five. Top five, yeah. The top five. Oh, and, then oh, we, oh. and then we assigned two people. I thought we there were five. Two. Right. We had five. It was the select board policy, yeah, we, capital we, projects, yep. Oakland Road, housing trust, yep. and the new. Yeah, the housing trust. Right. right. So Barry and I are doing the housing trust. Um, and Dan and I are doing policy. Who, who's doing. Uh, the Oakland Road. Is that you I and John? I think Oakland Road and uh, capital projects, John and I have... Agreed. Yeah, I think if capital we team up on those okay. they, together... They, they go hand in hand. Okay. Um, so... That's checked off. That's checked off. School board policy is Dan and I. Select board. Select board policy. I, the uh, select board policy board is being divided up. Right. It is. It is. That's it's true. Um, so... Because uh, yeah. aren't you and Barry working on part of that, too? Yeah, in about five hours. <laughs> Vanessa, yeah, Vanessa. And uh, so the housing Stop trust it. is Barry and and the new Andy. EDC Andy. is oh, I I volunteered for that. I'll volunteer for that one if there's who did new, the new EDC was there. I thought, Dan, I thought Dan, was Dan, Dan did the EDC. Oh, okay. Okay. And who else was doing the EDC? I mean, all, it, the EDC part kind of connects to some of the economic development stuff, which I've been sort of following a lot. So you, yeah, the two so of you want to work on that? Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to. Yeah, okay. I, I, I had some Very thoughts to talk to the people. But. All right. All right. Um, okay. As of right now, I, I guess, well, I guess Oakland Road comes as a separate one. It's fine. It does, and okay. it's because it's, it's, I don't think it's a no-brainer. And the select board policy is being divided up divided by all by of us. Yeah. 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 So, okay, great. Um, uh, I, before we, I know it's late, and we got to go to executive session. We do? No. No. We don't. Good. That's just there in case we need it. Oh, that's good. So, so um, I just, because I can't email all of you on the agenda for next week, I wanted to go over it. And it is on page. Um, uh, so um, October second. Yeah. So it's in. It's it's on. It's on uh, page. It, you know, it's right up in the beginning of your of your packet. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Great. So um, I know John shared some ideas on the legislative update. Does anyone have any input yeah. into that? Yeah, those, those are all fun. Yeah. They that's great. They touched base on this morning's meeting, Barry, yeah. about the 50% um, two thirds votes on that zone. Oh, yeah. It's, um, but we already kind of discussed that here. There wasn't a lot of. Didn't that die in the last session? Uh, yeah. It's coming oh, back. It's coming back. Um, yeah, that was just one thing, that, you know. 
have we, did we invite the school committee in for um, that? Or, or the they're aware of this. I have not asked them yet. John knows. Because right. um, they, may, they may have a lot of things about Chapter I, 70. And I have little notes on the side that you don't usually see. Oh. <laughs> I mean, there's like some of the chapter 70 yeah. stuff and circuit breaker stuff. <coughs> I've asked him if they have questions as well, for sure. Yeah. Um, not asked them to attend. Or okay. Well, it sounds like a, a meeting that's going to be led by staff. Um, it depends on how many questions that I get sent. And well, you have mine. It's also, yes. Um, it's also I shared sure um, that with recognition Andy, it's, of, it's of Jim Dwyer's yep. service. And yes, fire. yes, yeah. <coughs> but I mean, uh, the rest of it is all money, money, money by um, uh, by different yeah. staff. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's the finance department. Yeah, and there will be an executive session. The tax relief and the classification is very interactive. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that, um, like Barry did tonight. Plus, we get Victor. You know, I mean. Yeah, I, I love. You have the show. Yeah. yeah. Just so two weeks after tomorrow or after next week, you're yeah. going to do tax classification. Yeah. So you really need to give him your final thoughts next Tuesday. Yep. Will he come in with some <coughs> preliminary stuff? He will. Okay. He will. Right. And Dan, um, you raised the question about the safer grant. So what I he he started it a different way. And what I told him today was um, do it the regular way, but then be prepared to analyze and discuss if we wanted to leave some money on the table. So yeah. It's oh, too complicated for him to do two full blown mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Yeah, I think you use the term is not in. Uh, Colin Parlance, safer grant? I'm sorry, that's the fire. F hiring f for firefighters. Yeah, oh, 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 but how it impacts oh, the oh, rates. The grant. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, it's we can choose to set the levy limit at, at a lower level. You can leave money on the table. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It changed, it's, the, it's a rate thing, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And so that's. And I, I don't have a definitive answer as to the timing of the <coughs> So do we have to decide that on October 16th? Yes. Yep. I would ask my colleagues who are planning to split, consider a split tax rate to have their specific suggestions ready for the future next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the suggestions, uh, based on the current uh, the, the new data, I mean, we, you know, will he have up to date uh, assessment? Yeah, like, you know, yeah. January seventeenth. Um, there's a couple things that aren't final, but you know, we wrote this final. I forget the number. It's three hundred thousand over what we estimate. Good. 800, it's good. And we haven't seen a nickel from downtown yet. Say again. Yep. It's 800,000, we haven't seen a nickel Some from haven't downtown. broken ground yet. Right, okay. Right. That's helpful. And Victor's going to give all the uh, permu permutations of a split tax rate. I would say not as many as last year. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good we're idea. We're not going to split the atom. Yeah, right. yes, no, let's let's not do well, that. Well, we were trying to do a different thing. Correct. The yeah. first year. Yep. Yeah, that's I right. I mean, we were trying to adjust right. to parity. I mean, yeah. so it, it, right. it called for some different. Right. We didn't, we didn't split the rate per Microscopic se. approaches to, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, to yeah, what we was going on. We didn't split it per se. We basically, um, yeah. we basically just um, mm. figured out how we we're going to do the senior tax. Yeah, that we was scalpel pay. work, not <coughs> yeah, 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 micro scalpel yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. So we send, our, we send our suggestions in uh, for what we'd like to see on Tuesday. You can do that now. You can also just react to what he says. Yeah, I think. Ask him yeah. questions. Yeah. He's fine with that. But okay. You really need to react with them next week. So okay. Yeah, yep. A lot of One of the things I'm going to want to see him break out is uh, for all scenarios that this board is proposing, what is going to be the impact, the, the change between the first and second quarter tax bill and the third and the fourth. Because okay. listen, we're in an override year, and if you split the tax rate, it's all going to go on the third and fourth. Yeah, That's an important impact. We, we on have to do some gymnastics. You, they've already billed the first and second quarters. For the override. Just with the override at the same split yeah. as last year. Yeah. If you have an additional split in FY19, it all gets back billed on quarters three and four. That's something the board should understand. And it catches up in three and four. Correct. What it, it won't be as bad next year because then you'll smooth it over the yeah. whole year. I mean, it, yeah, it's, oh, I see. It's, it's a so complex. You've got the effect of an override this year. You've yeah. got the effect of that split. And then this other stuff is going to start kicking in with the uh, the grand bargain yep. with the minimum wage. So yep. there's a lot of heat on business heat, right, right now. Right. So I just want you to think about that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to also look at doing it over a number of years. Uh, we'll be talking about that. Yeah, maybe, okay. maybe uh, deferring a year. Right. Right. Uh, work um, an estimate of the overwrite in the first two tax bills. That was not normal. 
Yeah. No. He said we can't hit them all with the bills three and four, and I would say I agree. I understood. So we had to do some gymnastics and ask the state to allow that. Yep. Okay. Um, well, that's any, anytime anybody does an override, it's the same <coughs> thing. Why? Sometimes they wait for the tax classification, then they oh, separate really? and the whole rest of oh, the, the whole override year. comes in. Ouch. Bills three and four. Okay. All right, glad we did it the, the other way. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Anybody else have a, a comment on, on the agenda? I think it's pretty full. I can't think of that. You got the one Move that I adjourn. Bob, Second. you got it. Yeah. All right, all, all in favor of adjourning? Yep. All right, Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Yep.